next on CBS. Jaguars have the best record in the National Football League coming in 13 and 1. 39 degrees here in Nashville today. There is a bit of a breeze which may play with the kicks. And here is Steve Lindsay who has kicked more touchbacks than any other kicker in the NFL. And Mason will take it for Tennessee at the six yard line. And he is whacked and brought down immediately by Brant Boyer. A linebacker after a 16 yard gain. Jeff Fisher in his fifth year as the head coach of this franchise. Really got these guys believing they're going to win every time they go out there. Steve McNair, first time he's been totally healthy against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's always had a little nick or a coming off of an injury. He's 100% ready to go today. Missed six games earlier in the season, but now he is back. He has only, though, thrown one touchdown pass in the last seven weeks on the 22-yard line, first down and 10. He's got Yancey Thickpin back in the lineup today, though, Kevin. That'll help those touchdowns. That is a big chore, and here is a big chore for the defense of Jacksonville trying to stop Eddie George, who picks up three. Brought down by Kevin Hardy, 51. Lonnie Marsh, the ex-Tennessee player, in the middle. Hopkins, Matthews, Long, Benji Olsen, and John Runyon on the offensive line for the 15th-rated offense in the NFL. George and Neal in the backfield. Dyson and Yancey Thickpen back at wide receivers. Frank Wycheck is the tight end, the leading receiver, and bound for the Pro Bowl. Second down and seven from the 25. McNair right to work and outside, caught by Kevin Dyson, immediately tackled by Aaron Beasley. And it's a gain of five, setting up third down in a couple. Jacksonville's defense, number one most of the season, number two coming into today. Win Walker, Seth Payne, and Tony Bracken's a great one at the right end. Lonnie Martz in the middle, flanked on one side by Puff, on the other side by Kevin Hardy. And good to see Hardy back in the game after the scare last week. Bryant and Beasley are the cornerbacks. The great Carnell Lake, five-time Pro Bowler, and Donovan Darius are the safeties. It's third down and two from the 30. Bird is in motion, 83. McNair out of the pocket, gets the block for Neal, goes outside, first down catch made by Isaac Bird. A guy who came off the Kansas City practice squad, it's a gain of six on third and a couple in a Tennessee first down. They come in with the two tight ends. Bird, as you see, is going to go in motion just up into the out cut right here. And Fernando Bryant has got him, but he's got inside technique. See him make the turn late. It's a quick throw out of pocket with Steve McNair. He's a guy that's a threat to run. They can't just defend the run against Eddie George. It's Steve McNair and Eddie George in the run game. It's like two running backs back there. And when you've got that threat to throw it, it's tough to defend for Jacksonville. From the 36, first and 10, game opening drive. Smingy may have been offside. Here comes McNair, chased by the aforementioned Smingy. And he breaks the tackle there, getting a block ahead from Wycheck right now with the necessary yards for a first down. It's a gain of 12 by McNair. Flag is on the field. Darius knocked him out of bounds. Walt Coleman is our referee today, and he'll tell us from the south in just a second. It is offsides against Jacksonville. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas, one of the best in the business. Offside, defense, 91, penalties declined. First down. Now listen, huh? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and that's the way you say defense. <laughs> I guess you do, especially <laughs> when you're the crew chief. Offsides against Seth Payne. Injury-filled 98 season. Good-looking run right there by McNair. And there has been somewhat of a controversy in this city. Should it be O'Donnell? Should it be McNair as the starting quarterback? Well, Neil O'Donnell was 4-1 and one when he was in the lineup during the injury time for Steve McNair. But he can run the ball. It was a free play for him. He knew he drew the offsides, and he had the chance to throw deep or run for the first. He made it. On the 48, first down and 10. It's George again with a great block from Bruce Matthews, and there he goes inside the 35 to the Jacksonville 34. It's a rumbling gain of 19 yards for Eddie George, one of the best in the business. Watch Matthews come out here and make the first block right here on the outside. See, he's pulling. There's the hit. Eddie George is clean. Look at downfield, though, the blocking by Jackie Harris. Extra yards, Jimmy, or uh, Yancey Thickpin blocking as well downfield. Those are the touchdown blocks. I used to tell my receivers when I was coaching, man, we'll get them on downfield. You make the touchdown block or the extra yards block. That's what uh, Tennessee was doing on that play. 
Now from the Jacksonville 34, it's first and 10 for Tennessee on the game opening drive. Splits. McNair once again to George. He gets a lead block from Benji Olsen and tumbles his way to the Jacksonville 28, tackled by Lake. A gain of seven on first down by Eddie George. They try to drive. Lonnie March is going to try to come in inside right here. You see him going to, or right here, excuse me. He's going to cheat up, coming inside, and he actually runs himself out of the play. Inside, he gets blocked down. There goes the ball outside. Both these teams do a good job of picking up the run blitz, and the run blitzes are designed to fill gaps. Pass blitzes, of course, are designed to get up the field, penetrate, get to the quarterback. Second down and four, Eddie George, three yards away from 1,200 for the season, and here he goes right there, and he's got his 1,200 yards. He's inside the 25 to the 24. He becomes the fourth running back in the history of the NFL, joining Earl Campbell, Eric Dickerson, and Barry Sanders for over 1,200 yards in their first four seasons. Incredible display. Well, I'll tell you, the durability is uh, pointed out in that 1,200 yards. Of course, takes a great runner, takes a power runner as well as a speed, a guy with speed that can get outside. Can't be running one way all the time. You've got to have all the shots. He's got them. Former Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State back in 95. Eighth play of the game opening drive by Tennessee at the 24-yard line of Jacksonville. McNair again. It's Eddie George shiftily trying to get away from Gary Walker. Then he is devoured by Walker. A guy who used to play for this franchise when they were called the Oilers for four years came to Jacksonville and made the grab. As you take a look at Bryce Pop, who was assisting, but Walker was the one that made the tackle. And once again, they brought Lonnie March in the middle. They're trying to stop the run or try to get some penetration so those guards can't pull. We saw in a big run a moment ago, Bruce Matthews making a, a pulling trap kind of a block. They want to try to keep him from doing that by shooting the gap. Second down and 10, ninth play of the drive from the 24 of Jacksonville. Here comes the blitz by Hardy. He gets away from March and he pulls the pass caught. Near a first down, Kevin Dyson makes the grab. Dyson is out of Utah, and he was taken five slots ahead of wide receiver Randy Moss. Watch the pickup right here of the blitz. You see they're crossing in and out. They're trying to get penetration, but Jacks or Tennessee is getting just enough of a nick right there. Aaron Beasley is playing that soft cover. When I say soft coverage, I mean he's keeping everything in front of him. That was only the third pass, six runs so far in this ball game. Dyson already having a career year, third down and one. Inside the 15 at Jacksonville. It's Eddie George with a nice block from Hopkins. And he's got the first down. Diving to the 11-yard line. Brought down by Cornell Lake. It's a game of three on third and one. And Tennessee continues to roll. They're, they ran right into the teeth of the defensive strategy of Jacksonville that time. Kevin Hardy was lined up on the end of the line and came hard across. They got... A clean block on him and then the inside run for the first down. How do you see that big harness or that neck roll he's got on his neck? Last week he collided with his teammate Tony Brackens on the field for probably 10 minutes before they got him off. Scared him. Turned out not to be serious. Took him off in a stretcher. He was numb. He said in the upper part of his body. Here's a first and 10 from the 12-yard line. McNair fires a bullet cut by Whitechuck. He spins. He's grabbed by Marks at the four-yard line. And Donovan Darius, it's a gain of eight. And now they are inside the Jacksonville four. That's just a little option pass. Whitecheck can either turn inside or outside. Here he is. He's going to now turn in or out. He turns out, but it kind of settles. You see him doesn't run into any traffic out there. The ball is quickly thrown. That's one of those three steps. Get the ball up. I'll find somebody. Offensive line, keep their hands down for me by hitting them low. Hit the defensive lineman low. And Inside the four-yard line. Second down and two, just inside the Jacksonville four. They've run the clock seven minutes so far. And here's McNair. Here comes Kevin Hardy. There's the pass. Almost picked off. Incomplete. That ball was ricocheting from one player to the next. Dangerous pass. Incomplete. It'll be third down. Getting up a little slow after that hit by Kevin Hardy. And Steve McNair. Shoulder pad all popped out of his jersey. Getting a lot of pressure now. The pressure's going to come from the outside from Kevin Hardy. McNair tries to buy just enough time. Almost, though. That was Donovan Darius. Almost intercepted. It's third and two. Inside the four. George in the backfield. 
Blocked by George. Time for the quarterback. Touchdown catch made by Michael Rome. Michael Rome caught the game-winning touchdown pass in Jacksonville earlier this season. That's his second touchdown grab of the year, both against the Jaguar defense. He's coming back from an injury earlier in the year, about seven weeks ago in the weight room, a little herniated disc. He's right back in action. A little quick one to the outside. Nice throw, nice block by Eddie George. Al Doug Greco will try the extra point. Cleanly through, 7-0 Tennessee. Game opening drive. And what about the second-ranked defense in the NFL in Jacksonville? Well, they're going up against an offense that's really inspired today. It's the Titans by seven. Good-looking drive orchestrated by Steve McNair. Five of six throwing at four different receivers. 13 plays, seven and a half minutes on the clock. And three for three on third downs in that drive. In the first quarter, though, Tennessee's been good. They have outscored their opponent 99 to 37 coming into this ball game. Now Craig Hendrick will kick off. The wind is at his back. He's at his own 30. Deep back, Alvis Witted and Lindsey Jackson. And this will be Witted inside the 25, breaking a tackle of Dorset and smothered by Terry Killens, number 50. And then in Sydney, we see Killens play in Texas. Touchdown catch by Roan, Titans by seven. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Web TV and by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Gorgeous new stadium here in Nashville. Kevin Harlan, Sam Weish. And a wonderful looking drive by Tennessee. Opening up the game. 7-0 there on top. Here comes the crowd, Kevin. And Jacksonville begins it at the 28 with a first and 10. Mark Cornell is under center. And the handoff goes with a great tackle made by Josh Evans. Fred Taylor stopped in his tracks. Loss of three on the play. Tom Coughlin is the coach. Four consecutive playoff berths for his Jacksonville team. And Mark Brunell, quarterback in the day, only thrown eight interceptions all year long, but three of them came in the first meeting against Tennessee. And, of course, a big one, Samari Roll, intercepted one with 57 seconds to go and down in that rainstorm in Jacksonville earlier. Now it's second and 13. Kyle Brady, the tight end, is back after missing the first three weeks. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for Taylor. And brought down again by Josh Evans. No gain on the play. Woo. It'll be third. <laughs> <laughs> They're hidden. Seventh ranked offense in the NFL. Baselli, the great Tony Baselli with Coleman, Wade, Weger, and Searcy. In the backfield, they begin with Fred Taylor, although Stewart will play. Shelton, the blocking back. Jimmy Smith, the number one wide receiver in the NFL with McCardell. And Damon Jones is the tight end. Three-man line in for the rush now. They've only got three guys right here going to go after the quarterback. It's third and 13 for Jacksonville at their 25. Brunel, good block by Vasselli. There goes Brunel. He has to get up to the 38. He's chased by Jackson and run out of bounds. And he's got the first down to the 39. That's a gain of 14 on third down and 13. Tennessee's defense, 19th NFL. Curse, Evans, Fisk, and Holmes. Curse going to the Pro Bowl as a starter as a rookie. Robinson, Wortham, and Bowden are the linebackers for Tennessee. And in the secondary, Walker and Samari Rowe who played at Florida State. Robertson and Blaine Bishop are the safeties. And them all spread out, four wide receivers. 14-yard scamper by Brunel from the 39. It's first and 10. Good time for Brunel. Fires a pass, and it's caught by McCardell for a first down. Spinning his way to the 47. It's a gain of 14 yards. Tackle made by Samari Roll. Damon Jones comes in motion. They start out with a four-wide receiver set. Going straight down the field is Keenan McCardell. Soft coverage by Samari Roll. Beautiful design of the play. They're just spreading them all out. Find the open hole. Keenan McCardell, they call Thunder. And 
Jimmy Smith is lightning between the two of them. Pretty effective as those numbers demonstrate. Maybe the best pair of wide receivers on any team in the NFL. From the 47 with the rush on from Kirsch, the pass is dropped by tight end Damon Jones. Kirsch made that happen with his tremendous pressure on Brunel. It'll be second down and 10. And most of the time, Jacksonville will use that little rollout, that, what we call a naked. He's the quarterback comes out there by himself, no blockers, to his left because he's a left-handed quarterback. So he's got to twist his body around to make the throw. And when he did, with the pressure that time from Kirsch, couldn't put the money where it needed to be, the ball where it needed to be. Kirsch is fantastic. He is one of the best athletes on the field, and he's in the defensive line. Second down and 10. Right Is block it? as you see at five from the 47, second and ten. Good block by Coleman. The pressure is on. The pass is caught by tight end Damon Jones, plowing his way to the 35. It's a gain of 11 yards. Tackle made by Blaine Bishop. What tremendous presence by quarterback Mark Brunel. But protection by the offensive line. Both team, both teams' coaches said that this is going to be one right up front with good play on both sides of the ball. The token fake. You're going to see the tight end now. He's just going to come right down there, and Dame Jones is going to turn in. The ball's thrown hard. Quarterback will be stepping up into the pocket. The offensive line is going to try to push everybody behind him. First and 10, Jacksonville at the Tennessee 35. Brady is on the move. And the handoff goes to Taylor. Stopped again. Curse got him high, and John Thornton got him low. Two rookies tag-teaming Taylor, a loss of three. That interior line for Tennessee has just played outstanding football so far. They're not playing on their side of the ball. They're penetrating and getting into the backfield area of Jacksonville. And what that does is you can't time up your blocks because the ball is handed off. The ball carrier is expecting to have a couple of steps to break off the block. Instead, he has somebody right in his face. Second down, 13. This drive by Jacksonville coming after a good-looking drive by Tennessee to take the lead from the 38 of the Titans. They hand off. There's the pass right down the middle and through the hands of the leaping and turning tight end Kyle Brady. Inactive the last three weeks with the knee, twisting his way up, couldn't grab onto the pass. It'll now be third and 13. Another little token play action pass. Leon Searcy that time, the right tackle though, is tipping the pass. He lined up in an off, almost like a third and long situation. It won't be long before Javon Percy will be able to pick up when he's going to throw and when he's going to run. We'll talk later about the fact that Kersey has one move he features each week. This week it's trying to come underneath Leon Searcy. Jacksonville number three in the NFL in third downs. Third and 13. Brunel going deep down the side and intercepted. He was going for Alvis Witted, intercepted by Samari Rowe. Doing his best impression of Deion Sanders. He takes it out to the five-yard line. He should have left it in the end zone. And then he got it back at the 20. And there's a reason why I was doing Deion Sanders. He went to Florida State, and he wears Sanders number 21 in the NFL in tribute to him. Ball's going to come down the right side now. Samari Roll is the cornerback. Safety in the middle. Soul steals it. Time up. Samari Rolls, second round pick last year out of Florida State. Jeff Fisher is in his ear. The mistake he made after he made a, an interception was a good play as he ran the ball out to the five-yard line. That was a third and 13 play. If they'd have punted the ball to the five-yard line, it would have been a Jacksonville good play. As it turns out, they got the ball just as if they'd done it. McNair on first and 10 from his own five, throwing to the tight end. Michael Rohn, incomplete pass. Rohn caught the touchdown pass in the first drive for Tennessee. It'll be second down and 10 and get the most comprehensive analysis of NFL matchups with complete statistical recaps and CBS Sportsline's matchup breakdown. Just click on to the NFL at cbs.sportsline.com. With Sam White, Kevin Harlan in Nashville. It's second down and 10 after the roll interception of Mark Brunel at the five. Eddie George in the backfield. And McNair again to the air. And again, hitting on his tight ends. It's a gain of five for Frank Whitecheck, who is one of the top receiving tight ends in the NFL. As you see, Chicago and St. Louis and other scores. 
It's a big day in the NFL with huge games and Sam tremendous consequences all the way around. Well, this is not a playoff game we're watching today, for example, but it feels like one because the consequences are home field advantage. That's what they're playing for. Play one more game at home in the playoffs and the edge goes your way. After the five yard game, third and five from the Tennessee 10. Short drop, big throw, caught by Whitechip. And he's grabbed and brought down after getting a first down. The tackle was made by Lonnie Martz. It's a gain of six on third and five. In the AFC, this is what it looks like. Division leader, Kansas City, and then those that have clinched, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Tennessee. And what about Kansas City and Seattle later today? A huge game. Seattle beat Kansas City earlier. If Seattle wins, they're tied for first. That's at this time of year, it all boils down to like the 18th green you know you have to make that one putt to win the tournament that's where football is today don't, and next week don't keep it short from the 16 yard line first and 10 for tennessee off play hand off to george who broke one tackle then he's brought down in the backfield after a gain of three by lonnie march who used to play for tennessee then was cut this past july it'll be second down played for me in tampa bay as yeah, well that's right and this is what it looks like in the NFC. Of course, the big one there, the big story of the year, St. Louis at 12 and 2. Their home field throughout the playoffs. How about the fold by the Dallas Cowboys? And the rise of the Carolina Panthers. Yes, I mean, exactly. So many things have happened uh, that were unexpected this year. Teams have played the total uh, unpredictable competition that the NFL brings. Second down and seven. And off to George. Good block ahead by Olsen and Runyon, and then he is stopped for a gain of three. Brought down by Brant Boyer, and so now it'll be third down and a couple to go. One thing you see in this ball game on both sides, both teams, when a tackle is made, you see three or four, not one or two, three or four or five more players immediately coming into the frame of the camera. It is gang tackling. Turnovers are crucial in a game like this. It was a big factor in their first game. Very intense. This is like a playoff feels. It may not be a playoff game, but this is the way it feels when you're there. Good point, third down and three from the 23. It's a pass, left tackle way off the ball. Tennessee has converted every third down they've had today. Four of four, the blitz is on. He gets by Hardy, and McNair throws a pass. It's caught by Thickpin, breaking one tackle on the play of Bryant, and moves up to the 38-yard line. He slipped Fernando Bryant, the rookie from Alabama. Then Bryant came to make the tackle. It's a gain of 15 yards for Yancey Thigpen, who has been active the last five weeks with an ankle injury. I was talking to Neil O'Donnell. Kirk Thigpen's going to come right inside and just turn in. Talking to Neil O'Donnell before the game, I said, what, what's the difference? It's one more good football player. I mean, a guy that coming into this ball game at 581 yards led the team in passing and receiving yardage, and he's been out five or six weeks. A captivating beginning for the best game in the NFL today. Eddie George has been on fire. 37 yards, and his Tennessee Titans lead 7 0. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by 1010 220 for great long distance rates anywhere in America and around the world, and by Mitsubishi Motors. Wake up and drive. Kevin Harlan and Sam White. And yeah, you've got Jaguar fans and Titan fans. Tennessee's on top on a touchdown pass in the opening drive of the game. 7-0, they're on top right now. We begin the second quarter with a first and 10 for Tennessee at the 38. McNair fakes the handoff, rolls. He's chased by Bryce Pop. He looks downfield, makes a seductive move. Wide open is the tight end, Jackie Harris. Rumbling all the way. He'll get a block. He's in the end zone on a 62-yard touchdown. It's Jackie Harris's first touchdown catch of the season. A bootleg to the left. This is what Steve McNair brings to the table. Kept that ball alive long enough for Jackie Harris to work his way open on what was not part of the design play. Del Greco's extra point on the Craig Hendrick hold. It's 14-0 Tennessee. The 62-yard touchdown pass, the longest pass play allowed this year by Jacksonville's defense and the second touchdown pass of the day by McNair. 
And it was more than just that one play. Remember, they started on the five-yard line after the interception by Samari Roll. Jackie Harris is lined up right here. Now, he's going to make a block. He, he is really part of the protection scheme. And then late, I used to use the word trickle. You just get up and kind of find a little hole, trickle your way loose. And Steve McNair finds him. Of course, he's a little bit more than just a little loose. There he comes. That's Jackie Harris right here. Goes down, gets up. Steve McNair sees him back to the inside. Look at that good fake, too, on pop. Once you get a guy running like that, Bryce Pop's a good athlete. When you get him running sideways, he can't stop and start as fast as Steve McNair can. Jackie Harris, who has played with Green Bay and Tampa Bay, first touchdown catch of the season. Up 62 passes for me in Tampa Bay in 95. The ensuing kickoff picked up by Lindsey Jackson, a rookie free agent. He's out of Arizona State. He takes it up the middle, past the 20 to the Jacksonville 22. Brought down by Dorsett and Greg Favors. This place is rocking. Tennessee up on two touchdown passes. With Sam White, this is Kevin Harlan. We're in Nashville, Tennessee, where the Tennessee Titans coming in at 11 and three and unbeaten at home this year, seven and all. Line up on defense, Jacksonville from the 23, first and 10. McNair, two touchdown passes already in the game. Mark Brunel, right to work. He gets a block, and down he goes. Inhaled by Fisk. Josh Evans was there. Jason Fisk, the ex-Minnesota Viking, with the grab. Tennessee bringing a lot of stuff. Now, Jason Fisk is going to come inside and around. Eddie Robinson was faking the blitz inside. Here he comes around. He's going to get up into that hole. And all they're doing is they're forcing Tennessee to pass their offensive linemen to pass off these rushers. And if you get grabbed by one of them, penetration right away into Mark Brunel's face. Now it's second down and 16 back at the 17-yard line for Brunel. Good block by Cersei to the sideline. It's caught by McCardell. Even though Samar Roll was there, one official says he bobbled it. And Incomplete pass, incomplete pass to McCardell on the side from Mark Brunel. And both officials are going to look at each other and they're going to concur on something like this before they do it. Brunel's going to his left side immediately. You'll see him look, set, and throw it. Possession wasn't complete when he goes out. There he's got one foot in. Possession not quite there in the ruling of the official. I'm not sure you got the other foot. You see both, both hands are on the ball at that point anyway. So good call to the officials. Right now, Jacksonville facing third and 16. They've had third and 13 twice, and now third and 16. Here comes Curse. There goes Brunel. Chased by Curse. Down the sideline, the pass. He was looking for McCardell. And incomplete again to the sideline. The coverage by Sidney and Blaine Bishop. And Jacksonville has got a punt. Out they go, down 14-0. And coming up in the NASDAQ halftime report, Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry will get you caught up on all the scores, all the highlights. It's next on the NASDAQ halftime report from New York. Mark Riddell that time had Fred Taylor wide open. That, you know, so far this ball game, you see players that aren't sharp early on. Mark Riddell's just not sharp right now. Mark. Ryan Barker with a low kick picked up by Derek Mason, who takes it into Jacksonville territory at the 43. A meager 38 yards on the punt. A 12-yard return. The tackle made by Rich Griffith, who centered the ball to Barker. Timeout. Everything going the way of the Titans now. Jacksonville comes in with the best record in the NFL today. They've won 11 consecutive games. But this is a bigger win right now than, uh, than you can imagine because it gives them that bye week, first week of the playoffs. They rest their players. They get a little bit of a, a time to think about uh, their opponent, watch their opponent play and wear themselves down. Tennessee, on the other hand, is looking for that first game at home in the playoffs, even though they won't be division winners necessarily, although it could happen if Cincinnati were to knock Jacksonville off next week, assuming Tennessee goes on and wins this game. A poor punt by Barker, a pretty good return by Mason. It's first and 10 from the 43 and some confusion reigning, and Tennessee's got to burn their first time out, but they're a to himself by saying, hey, Coach Fisher, I blew that. Timeout taken, Tennessee by 14. 
the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. We help you invest responsibly. Sprint PCS. Experience the clear alternative to cellular. And by Honda. A winning lineup of cars, sport utility vehicles, and minivans. Sparkling day here in Nashville. Sparkling play so far for the Titans with Sam White, Kevin Harlan. 14-0 Tennessee on two McNair touchdown passes today. And on third down, they have been absolutely perfect. Four for four on third downs to four different receivers. And of course, the big one to Jackie Harris for the touchdown. McNair has gone 9 of 11, hitting six different receivers. On the Jacksonville 43, it's first and 10. George in the backfield. Takes the handoff, good block by Hopkins, affording the quarterback time. And the pass by George, or rather to George, is dropped at the 39-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. All right, Kevin, it's fourth and eight for the Colts. They're down seven at Cleveland. And Jim Moore is going for it. What else? Manning to Marvin Harrison. First down inside the five. It set up an Edger and James touchdown that has tied it in the second quarter. Let's go back to you. Thank you, Jim. Ten consecutive wins by the Colts coming into today at 12 and 2. It's second down and 10 here on the Jacksonville 43 for Tennessee. Outside the pass, caught by George with room to roam and down to the 26 yard line. Tackled by Boyer, an 18 yard gain on the play out of the backfield to Eddie George. And it's one of the things that happens if you're bringing people. This is Kevin Hardy. He's going to come inside. And when he goes back inside like that, there's nobody covering Eddie George to the left. My guess is that Kevin Hardy had coverage responsibility and lost at that time, giving Eddie George a nice game. Looks like Tom Coughlin is aware better than I am of who actually had responsibility. I guarantee you somebody did. They don't leave one detail uncovered on Jacksonville. He just Tennessee. called. He just called a timeout. And it's Tom Coughlin. Going to get it straightened out right now. Too much riding on this game. Former head coach at Boston College trying to figure out what in the world is wrong with his second ranked defense in the NFL. Tennessee has already clinched a playoff berth. They're the only team that has beaten Jacksonville this year with Sam White, Kevin Harlan in Nashville from the 26. A Jacksonville defensive timeout, Sam, moments ago. Well, they made a mistake defensively, and Tom Coughlin didn't want to wait one second. He went right to timeout, straightened this out. They're down 14 to nothing. They can't afford to get much farther behind here, especially since their offense really isn't showing much so far. First and 10 from the Jacksonville 25-yard line. It's Eddie George. Great blocking by Olsen. A flag is down. And George scampering near the 13-yard line. It's a gain of 13, but wiped away with the holding penalty on the Titans. And they brought Donovan Darius Jacksonville did up in there to the eighth guy. They're doing everything they can to stop that running game. Holding. 60. Offense. 10 yards. Repeat first down. First penalty of the game. And penalties and turnovers, both coaches mentioned those two words to us in talking to them this week would be the difference in this game. They got to play tough but clean and not turn the ball over. You see Colts in Cleveland, Buffalo. New England has fallen flat on their face. They have really struggled. And right now out of the picture, Buffalo trying to carve even a higher niche in that rotation. Baltimore's had a very nice season. Yeah, very strong after the first part of the year. Very strong. They're going to be good next year because they got, they're just building right now. Because of the penalty back to the 36, it's first and 20. McNair pump pitch. Here comes the rush from Brackens. Goes outside. A block from Matthews. There goes Eddie George. Piercing the 21 down at the 20-yard line of Jacksonville. It's a gain of 15. Spinky makes the tackle. A well-orchestrated screen pass to Eddie George. Back to New York in our NFL Today studios and Jim Nance. All right, Kevin, the Cleveland Browns close out their season today. Ty Detmer at quarterback. The flag is against the Colts. Detmer will connect with Darren Shiverini, and the Browns lead the Colts. 14-7, back to you. Unbelievable, Jim. Cleveland has not won at home all season long. Second down and five. It's George again. Picks him free around the block by Kevin Long, the center. He's down to the 18. Bryce Pop makes the grab right there. A gain of three on the play. 
Tennessee's doing uh, something very unusual here. They have one play, they bring in everybody in tight. The very next, they're spread out wide. Last week, Jacksonville playing Cleveland Browns. Remember, Chris Palmer was a coordinator here in Jacksonville. And he spread the Cleveland Browns out. I guess they're doing that up in Cleveland today as well. But he had them all over the field, and it seemed to hurt Jacksonville a little bit. Tennessee's taking the tactic. We're going to give you a look at that all the time, make you worry about it. But we're going to go back to our game, our regular game, and that's running the ball with Eddie George. Well, third down and two from the Jacksonville 18 yard line for Tennessee. George in the backfield. McNair, pump fakes and throws. And the pass is caught for a first down by tight end Jackie Hills. The second catch today, one of which was a touchdown tackle made by Donovan Darius. Another Titan first down. It's been short, quick throws or out of pocket throws for Steve McNair today. Frank Wycheck goes into the flat. Jackie Harris turns to the inside, both of them wide open. On the previous play, when they had that little screen play, they, they faked that little throw out to Wycheck. Remember the touchdown pass he threw to uh, Chris Bird, or Isaac Bird, a couple of weeks ago, and then they threw that screen. They're showing everything that Jacksonville's been studying all week long on film. Spectacular third down display today, throwing by McNair, first and 10, 15. Here's Eddie George. Tackled eventually on the play by Seth Payne after a gain of three, called second down and seven. Eddie George can run inside, he bounce it outside, but the bigger threat is put him in the backfield with Steve McNair, who can go outside with that fake and not be throwing the ball every time. He could be running it and hurt you. But Eddie George, 47 yards today, 32 receiving. Not a one-dimensional guy at all. Ten carries. Number four, AFC rusher, Eddie George, second down and seven. Spreading them out again. One time they're in tight, next time they're all over the place. From the Jacksonville 12. Good block by Hopkins, good block by Matthews. Here comes the rush, he gets away from Lynn. He gets a great block from London into the end zone. Enters, nope, not the way, incomplete. Almost picked off by Aaron Beasley who had it in his hands, John Runyon and Benji Olsen put on a dramatic display of blocking on that scramble by Steve McNair. Well, John Runyon right at the end. This is the fun part of the game for me to watch. <laughs> if you're not following the football all the time, you're just watching. Number 69, watch when, here goes to the right. Right back behind there, he gets nailed, gives McNair time to throw that ball, although it's almost intercepted by Aaron Beasley. Beasley's gonna come underneath, full extension. Not quite enough. It's third down and seven. From the 12. Trump play to George. Climbing down the middle and down to about the 10. Bottom of the pile getting up rookie Larry Smith. And they're going to have to settle for three. So Jacksonville's defense, Sam, gets a bit of a win right here as they hold McNair out of the end zone and force him to try for three. And Tennessee's been real good in what they call the green zone. Most teams call it the red zone. They call it the green for go zone, I suppose. They've been over 60% scoring touchdowns when they get in here. Jacksonville going to hold them out this time. Here's Del Greco, who's been great. Three field goals last week against... Atlanta, 30-yard try right here, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. And I'd have to say this will stun some NFL audiences around the country. Tennessee shutting out Jacksonville, 17 Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy ho the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Gateway. Call Gateway and connect with us, and by the U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. It's like Christmas all over again for Tennessee. They lead 17-0. Kevin Harlan alongside Sam White. And are you surprised by the score? I'm surprised by the score, but this was not over with. Keenan McCardell, Jimmy Smith, two good receivers. They're too good. I'm not saying T-W-O, T-O-O. They are fantastic down the field and get you back in the ballgame in a hurry. They're very tough. And, of course, they got the quarterback who's had a lot of come from behind wins already this season. But these two teams are so even, Sam, in so many ways. Well, they are, but you're right. Mark Brunell has not looked as sharp as he does most Sundays. He'll be back in this ballgame in just short order. Lindsey Jackson bobbled it, and it went into the end zone, and it will be a touchback as Hendrick gets it deep. And so onto the 20-yard line will go Jacksonville. Tuesday on CBS, a medical miracle gave him a new identity. The only catch, he can never tell the family he left behind. This is your chance to see now and again on a special day in time, Tuesday at 10, 9 central on CBS. 
You know, Kevin, they, Jacksonville has not thrown the ball to Jimmy Smith yet. He'll be part of this offense before it's over with, though. To get, they have to do it in order to get back in the ball game. On the 20-yard line, first and 10. Grinnell winding up, going deep, and looking for McCardell, who is jousting with Samari Roll, incomplete pass, second down and 10. Marcus Robinson, the safety, is right there, too. Mark Grinnell is trying to make something happen quick right here. He had a couple of people open underneath. Most pass patterns are designed where you've got quicker or control uh, receivers underneath and somebody down the field. If he's not there down the field, bring it down and throw it short. Mark Brunel's been there a long time. He'll be getting back into that rhythm soon. As you can see, it's not the kind of day that he's used to. Two out of eight. He's missed his last five. Second down and ten. Hand off. And Taylor with no place to wheel. Tackled by Jason Fisk. It's a gain of two. The interior line first started with Josh Evans early in this ballgame. Made the first two tackles of the ballgame. But the two defensive tackles for Tennessee have just given no ground at all to Jacksonville. It's frustrating when you're calling plays and you can't find those two, those three to four yard gains on first down up the middle of the run. Now third down and eight from the 22 yard line. Good time for Brunel. Fires a pass which is caught by McCardell. And he's out near the 29, close to a first down, but Sam, I think perhaps shy by the length of the football is Eddie Robinson, who used to play for Jacksonville's defense, now at Tennessee, makes the tackle. Way too early to be gambling for Jacksonville at this point. Brian Barker will be coming up. Mark Brunel so far to me it's not anything he's done wrong but there have been other opportunities that might have been better for him that he just hasn't spotted out there today and he's so good it won't last all left to do so after the second consecutive three and out by jackson bill parker again first punt went 38 yards this one high but not very long it's dying at the 39 yard line fair caught by mason a 33-yard punt on the heels of a 38-yard Barker punt. Not a good start for him. CBS is the only place to be on New Year's Eve. Don't miss Dave in primetime. Oh, oh. Grammy's greatest performances, Will Smith, and a millennium celebration not to be missed. It's all right here on CBS New Year's Eve. Kevin Arlen, Sam White, in Nashville, Tennessee. Kevin, what will you be doing on... Uh... Uh, I dominion. will be with uh, my four children, my beautiful wife, and we will be at home in Kansas City. Good for you. you. Celebrating the end. Where will you be? I'll be uh, working, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you set me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's first and ten for Tennessee, shy of their 40-yard line. We'll call it the 39. Good time for McNair. Throws a dart, which is dropped at the 45-yard line. The tight end, Frank Whitecheck. He was a Pro Bowl alternate last year, is a reserve this year, one of the best three drops so far by Tennessee today, uncharacteristic of this team. Part of that one was Carnell Lake, who's playing free safety for the first time. Of course, he was strong safety and cornerback for so many years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but has more freedom out there. He can freelance a little bit and come at those kind of throws. He's a beauty. Second down and 10, shy of the 40. Eddie George again. Running and stopped in his tracks. A nice, aggressive defense by Jacksonville. A gain of three. Tackle made by Darius. Seth Payne was in there as well. 12 carries for George and 50 yards today. He did go over the 1,200-yard mark earlier in this game. For the fourth time. Right, yeah. Donovan Darius is a safety. Seth Payne is a defensive lineman. They're both standing side by side when Je Eddie George got to the line of scrimmage. That tells you a little bit about how aggressively this Jacksonville defense is playing, and Tennessee's defense is playing the same way when Jacksonville has the ball. Now third down and seven from the 42. Shotgun snap. Here comes the Hardy blitz. It's picked up well. Outside it goes. The white check has to get to the 50-yard line, but is shy. Nice. Aggressive defense by Jacksonville, Fernando Bryant, their celebrated number one pick out of Alabama, who is from nearby Murfreesboro, Tennessee, makes the tackle. Okay, now Jacksonville finally stopped Tennessee. They haven't done it all afternoon. They got him free and out of there for the first time this afternoon. This is the kind of a 
situation in a game that turns it around for a team like Jacksonville. A good football team, 13 and one, undefeated on the road, six and one at home, but only been beaten by one team. This opponent today, Tennessee. Hendrick led the NFL in punting last year. Not as much this year. The K-Balls have played with his kicking a bit. Plus, they've not had him in the kind of instances where he can boot long. But here he gets off a rocket, which is taken by McCardell. And then he is doused by Anthony Dorsett. Does that 33 look familiar? Does that last name look familiar? That is Tony Dorsett's young son. And he is a great one. One of the best special teams players in the NFL. Anthony Dorsett. Week three, these two teams met in a downpour in Jacksonville. They got off to the lead. Aaron Beasley's 35-yard interception return for a touchdown. The Titans took the lead late after Neil O'Donnell's 12-yard touchdown pass to Michael Rohn, who has caught a touchdown pass today. And then Jacksonville had a late chance, but Samari Rohn made the interception. Now at the 11-yard line, first and 10. Great move by an explosive Fred Taylor as he detonates up to the 28-yard line. Robertson, the tackle, a gain of 19 on the play. And even this play, you're going to see Taylor come in and then bounce outside. You can see a difference in the intensity of the offense for Jacksonville. And I think it feeds off of the three and out defensive effort they just saw from their teammates. Good Everybody point. just hitting harder. They're playing harder. They're getting into it. This game started out so physical. You may have just kind of had to exhale a little bit and then get back into your rhythm. Unfortunately, they're down 17 and nothing before they get back. On the 29, first and 10. Hand off again to Taylor. Got a block from Jones, but nothing doing there. Blaine Bishop and Eddie Robinson. Bishop playing with a bad thumb. You can see the cast on there. Guy's been to the Pro Bowl a couple times. He is the leader of the secondary for the Titans. He's the captain of that defense and leading tackler the last couple of years, leading right now. He's, he's had a screws put in that thumb, and then one of them worked its way loose last week. He had to come out of the game. When this team was in Houston, when they were called the Oilers, a guy named Buddy Ryan was the coach, and he handpicked this kid, Blaine Bishop, out of Ball State. Nice pick, buddy. Yep. Second down and 11 on the 28. McCardell is on the move. Now with great oh. time, good block by Seeger, down court, and it's bubbled and reeled in by Jimmy Smith. At the 10-yard line of Tennessee, Denard Walker was covering on the play. It's a gain of 62 yards to the number one receiver in the NFL, the 99th reception of the season for Jimmy Smith. And Jimmy Smith kind of slows down. See, so kind of gear down, and then he goes again, almost like he thought the play might have been over. Time, too much time had passed. That's the first pass they've thrown to Jimmy Smith this afternoon. From the 10, it is first and goal. Brunel, the pitch out, a block by Shelton. There goes. Fred Taylor shimmering his way inside the five and near the four. A tackle of six. Baron Wortham made the stop for Tennessee's defense. Just a little quick toss, the quick block. You can feel this is a momentum switch, and I still go back to the three and out defensively that did it, but the offense has now picked him up, and the defensive guys on the sideline are over there saying, okay, we're going to get right back in this ball game. We'll be down by 10. If you're a Jacksonville fan, you're saying that to yourself, because now we're playing our football. What got us to 13 and 1? Second down goal from the four. As Brunel fakes the handoff, got a block from two. Here comes the rush, the pass incomplete. There was a blitz put on him by Eddie Robinson. Brady was the receiver near the goal line. The coverage by middle linebacker Baron Wortham. It'll be third and goal. Wortham thought he had that one all the way. He's a middle linebacker, and he's reading the eyes of the quarterback. You see there's a blitz, but they're in the defensive backfield, they're looking back at the quarterback. This was more of a zone than a defense. Their combination coverages actually should have had that one, Barry Wortham. Barry Wortham. It's third down and goal from the four. Shotgun formation for Brunel. Lines up, throws, incomplete. Great defensive play. A flag is down. Blaine Bishop was in front of wide receiver Jimmy Smith. I didn't think they were going to call that one, but it looked like interference. Mark Brunel was whacked hard on the play and is favoring his left ankle, left leg. 
penalty is against Tennessee. Pass interference, 23, defense, foul occurred in the end zone, ball will be placed at the one-yard line, first down. Big break for Jacksonville, the penalty is on the veteran Blaine Bishop. You guys see Jimmy Smith in motion coming across. Blaine Bishop's got that left, that right hand, so he's only got really one good hand, the left hand. He has no fingers that can really help him with the right hand, and he's overusing that left one. Got caught that time. It's first and goal. Backfield of Taylor, who easily takes it in, slicing for six on the one-yard touchdown run. And the fans here are booing because they didn't think Jacksonville should have had a first and goal at the one, but good call. Straight up the middle. You see the little block right there by the left guard, Ben Coleman. Just enough for Fred Taylor to come. See Coleman kind of pop up and then up the middle. The cutback vision of a good runner, Fred Taylor. His fourth touchdown of the season. Mike Hollis will try the extra point. He's been perfect this year at the Barker Hole. And the first score is on the board for Jacksonville today. A 62-yard pass completion to Jimmy Smith was the key play from Mark Brunel as they take a look at his twisted left ankle. On the sideline, 17-7, Tennessee on top. And Monday on CBS is the King of Queens' wife falling for another woman. Find out the shocking truth on the King of Queens. Part of the comedy broadcasting system. It's Monday on CBS. I have no comment on that one right now. <laughs> just assume me that one alone. Sam, I'm jumping on you there. I, I, just, I just want to watch. Jimmy Smith, 99 receptions, the most in the NFL, but probably none bigger than that 62-yard pass. He hauls in from Mark Brunel, capped by the one-yard touchdown run of Fred Taylor. And it's 17 to 7. And Jacksonville, I think you just said it, certainly not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. All right, watch. This is Jimmy Smith now going right down the chute. You know, of all those 99 receptions, he's only got six touchdowns, which is a little bit unusual. You would think your percentage would be higher for a down the field receiver like Jimmy Smith. Here's the kickoff by Lindsey. And caught. Isaac Bird at the 23. He breaks one tackle of Renee Stewart and then goes down. Chris Howard was down there covering two, a reserve running back. As you take a look at the great Jimmy Smith, one of the best, he'll be going to the Pro Bowl starting again. He has now gone 71 consecutive games with the reception. Thursday night, relive the most memorable feats from Dan Jansen's triumph to Christian Leitner's last second miracle to Doug Flutie's Hail Mary when we proudly present CBS's greatest sports moments Thursday 8 Eastern 7 Central now being included in that one will be Joe Carter's great home run back in the 93 World Series Toronto won that one Sam, over that home run Sam very impressive just a little bit of information I thought I'd share with you on the 29 first and 10 Jackie Harris the tight end is in motion and McNair hands off to George and they block from Bruce Matthews. He pile drives for four up to the 33. Kevin Hardy, the leading tackler, the heart of Jacksonville's defense, makes the stop. And Tennessee, I would guess, right now, is going to go back to what they were running, that list of plays they ran early in the ballgame when they were dominating Jacksonville, and just get back into the rhythm they had then. And that was Eddie George running the ball. That was Steve McNair outside quick with the passing game and also the short passing game by McNair. Second down and six from the 33. Run, run, run. No blitz, conventional four-man rush. And a pulling block by Olsen and nowhere to run for Eddie George. It's a meager gain of one. And Seth Payne makes the stop in the middle of that line. We've reached the two-minute warning. McNair has thrown two touchdown passes today. Timeout. Coming up in the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry will get you caught up. A lot of action today in the NFL. NASDAQ Halftime is next. Jacksonville here looking to clinch the AFC Central Division Championship with the win. Tennessee going to the playoffs. Their first playoff berth since 1993. They can clinch at least one home playoff game with a win or a tie. 
today. So right on the line, it's third and five. We're at the two-minute warning. Shotgun snap, good time for McNair. Now they creep through. The pass is caught by tight end Frank Whitechek, close to a first down, a gain of about four. He's up near the 39-yard line. Bryant and Kevin Hardy were there. Had three receivers, Whitechek being one of them, to the right side, and everybody just ran down, ran a little hook, trying to get the first down. You know, they've only thrown one pass to Yancey Thigpen today, who returns. He's been out the last five weeks. Came on the last third down for a first down. Five catches today for Whitechek. Three on third downs. He's been very clutch, as you say. Take a look at Thigpen. Word from the Jacksonville sideline. As Tennessee gets the first down by literally the nose of the football. Word from the Jacksonville sideline. Mark Brunel has sprained his left knee. He is in the locker room as we speak right now. Getting some treatment. His return is questionable for the rest of the day. That means Jay Fiedler would be the next guy in. Jonathan Quinn is the third quarterback who couldn't enter until the fourth quarter. Without, of course, uh, Fiedler being unable to return. Back. On the 39, first and 10, Jackie Harris makes the grab. It's a fumble on the play. Knocked loose by Fernando Bryant. Recovered at the 49 by Jacksonville. Bryant tore it free and recovered by Brant Boyer. And now the Jacksonville offense, Sam, comes out, but without Mark Brunel as their quarterback. Well, they've got everybody else out there. They've got that strong running game and turnovers and penalties. Let's see. They're discussing this one now. Here's the end zone look at it. Jackie Harris right here. Here's the quick catch. And there's a strip by Fernando Bryant. Looked like a a good clean uh, fumble to me good clean job of stripping him loose from the ball well now we are inside two minutes it cannot be challenged by the coaches but it can be challenged by the replay booth upstairs here in the press box well, which consists of four people from the national football league any question at all they will review it i guess it wouldn't be called exactly a challenge but a review that you would make inside two minutes if there's any question what they be asking right here is was did he have a knee down was his forward motion stopping it has nothing to do with a whistle that would take place on the field there's jackie harris number 88 25 is fernando bryant right Oop, looks knee like his left down. knee was down but that angle is we need a sideline view i think because we're blocked out to see if the ball was loose when that knee went down well the key to it is That's if he's got loose. control of it when that knee goes down if that's the view, and that may be the only view we have, that may be inconclusive because you can't see if the ball is loose. You can see the knee go down, but you can't see if the ball is right. loose. And it has to be conclusive. That's the key. There's you the can't knee tell. is down. You know, the, the part that I noticed there, though, is that Fernando Bryant, he's the only guy that strips the ball loose. His arm doesn't come flying out of that midsection of Jackie Harris until well after the knee was down, though. That, to me, would be inconclusive. It the, may be the question is, is the ball loose? Right. It may be inconclusive, but Jackie Harris was holding on that ball as tight as he could until Bryant stripped him loose from it, and that strip didn't happen until after the knee touched. You're sure of that? I am sure of that. Let's, I'll just, let's, let's that. take another look at it right here. All right, his knee is down now. Watch the strip. Now's yep. the strip. That's when the ball comes out. Well, look how far the, but, yeah, the but, ball is. But the ball is, Jackie know. Harris is holding on to that ball as tight as he can. You can't, you can't tell from that view. I, I was just watching the game, and I saw <laughs> I <know> exactly what happened. <laughs> well, that's my opinion of it, but you're right. It has to be conclusive, and if it can't be uh, determined from that view, then there won't be a reversal of the call on the field. That guy can sit and look at that thing all he wants, but that view will not tell him definitively that that was a fumble. Well, while, they, while we're looking, this, these two coaches right now, both of them, or about as tense as you can get with so much on the line. They both having a terrific season, and both of them wanted to finish strong. Unfortunately, one of them going to walk away from today with a with a bad taste. After reviewing the play, the runner's left knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Yeah. Second down. Once again, I, uh, I wish you wouldn't question my judgment. Here. Oh, well, okay. We saw the knee, but we did not see the ball. When you don't see the ball, you can't make the ruling. Well, I think, yeah, I think 
the, the, the officials, though, could see that the reason for the fumble was the strip by Fernando Bryant. And you can clearly see that that strip doesn't take place until after the knee is. Knee is down, here's the strip. So he must have had possession. Uh, I, I don't know. Deducted thinking. I don't know. I mean, that, that's what Walt Coleman thought, but I don't know how he can tell from that. Okay, Kevin, I, I just don't want to discuss it anymore. <laughs> the ruling is we're fine. Finished. Okay. Yeah, I know. We can't, we're not going to change it. A minute 21 left. Cleveland is on top of Indianapolis. We're almost at halftime in that game. Cleveland's still playing hard. Chris Palmer has them up working hard. They know their good times are ahead of them. Wolf just got a field goal. Third, make it second down and three. Three-man rush. McNair. With the rush coming on from Payne and Smendy. Breaks away from Payne, flies down the sideline, whacked by Brackens out of bounds. And a flag because it was a hit out of bounds. It's a 10-yard gain. Brackens with the quarterback on the chalk. And that's what the penalty flag was about. A late hit out of play. It looked like McNair had taken a step or two right along the sideline, out of bounds, before Brackens hit it. Extra special care for the quarterback. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 90 in the defense, hitting the man out of bounds. 15 yards, first down. Now the scramble's gonna happen to Steve McNair's right. You can see Tony Brackett's gonna show up right down in here. He's the defensive left end, he's on that side. Now here he comes, that's not him chasing him there, but Brackens is coming on this part of it, right there. And he can't quite see it because of the people standing on the sideline, but McNair was well out of bounds. On the 30, it's first down and 10. Three-man rush again. Great time by McNair. And off he goes to the tight end white check. He's got a first down inside the 20. He broke the tackle by Darius. He is brought down by Kevin Hardy. It's a gain of 17 with 50 seconds to play. And a timeout taken by Tennessee. They've got one left, and Jacksonville has two remaining. Well, that's another breakdown in coverage to have somebody that wide open with a three-man rush. Three-man rush means that you're going to have eight people back there in, in coverage, so and now, somebody's got that flat. So now Tennessee is down to the 13-yard line, and Monday on CBS begins with the King of Queens, starring Kevin James and Jerry Stiller, followed by Ladies' Man, then... Monday's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond. And then Becker starring Ted Danson. Find out who will be the time 100 person of this century. All Monday, right here on CBS with Sam White, Kevin Harlan. Timeout taken by Tennessee on the move again. Two Steve McNair touchdown passes, 17 to 7. A three down lineman, but a linebacker cutting. This one, they're going to come after him this time. On the 14-yard line. Here comes Brackens. McNair gets away inside the 10, spinning to the 5, corkscrewing to the 3. He's got a first down. Smitty made the tackle. It's a gain of 10. Line up quickly. They've got a timeout to burn. 30 seconds to play, and there's a quick spike of the ball. It'll be second down and goal. That'll stop the clock. And now officially 29 seconds. McNair could feel the coverage. This time they were going to bring four people. Show three and bring four. When he starts to scramble up the middle, he's going to make his yards. But here's where the strength and the size of McNair right there to make that extra two or three yards. And he does it on, every time he runs the ball. You can feel him falling forward like a running back does. Tennessee is a perfect 7-0 and all home this season. Second down goal from the two. George in the backfield. Maybe something right with those two tight ends over there. A lot of people. They're going right, and it's McNair to the end zone, and caught for the touchdown. Grabbed by Yancey Thickpen. Thickpen just comes a little bit, and he's just going to turn right inside right there. The slide gives him a little bit of a chance to free himself of the coverage. That time by Kevin Hardy. It's such a short throw. The ball's in the air such a short time. You can throw right into tight coverage like that. They've missed Yancey Thickman, although he hadn't had a lot of catches today. They've missed him. 
How about three touchdown passes from Steve McNair, the Del Greco extra point. McNair, Sam, had gone six consecutive games in the middle of the season without a touchdown pass. One in the last seven weeks. And now he throws three today against the number two defense in the NFL. And remember, that kind of coincided, or exactly coincided, with Yancey Thigpen's injury and being out of it. You, you think that a guy that is a go-to guy, remember he former Pittsburgh Steeler that played so many years with Neil O'Donnell, the backup quarterback at Tennessee, Tight coverage, bullet throw, just make a play. These are the things that the players do. This is not so much design of the play as it is. Guys, we're going to give you a chance to go out there and just make the play on athletic building. Don't Don't forget the fumble review, which went in favor of Tennessee, which was a little bit controversial, hard to decipher. But what looked like a fumble recovery by Jacksonville, they give it to Thickpin's Titans, and they go in on the touchdown as Steve McNair, with 25 seconds remaining, has trotted into the locker room. And now here's the kickoff by Hendrick, the ex-Green Bay Packer. Line drive boot. And this will be taken by Lindsey Jackson. And he's up to the 25-yard line, and then hit hard and dropped down by Donald Mitchell. Jacksonville he turned the momentum around momentarily. But the true measure of a good football team, Tennessee in this case, is coming right back and matching that score. Jacksonville had not done much. The defense held them to three, held Tennessee to three and out. Jacksonville marches right down and scores. It looks like they're back in the ball game, and then Tennessee takes all that momentum away from Tom Coughlin and his Jacksonville Jaguars. Jay Fiedler comes in last year with Minnesota, two seasons with Philadelphia. He has played this year. In fact, he directed a comeback in week six against Cleveland in Jacksonville. Brunel is in the locker room, twisted left knee. His return uncertain from the 25, first and 10. A pass right through the hands of McCardell. And then through the hands at the 40-yard line of the defensive back who just about had it, and that was Samari Roll. 21, incomplete pass. These are important plays for Jay Fiedler for one reason, just to give him a chance to get some action to see the, the field and warm his arm up and be ready to go in the second half if he's got to go uh, the entire second part of this ball game. He's a veteran player that has played before. What a plus that is for a football team to have somebody that's been in real competition. He's not a young player. Second down and 10, the fourth-year player from Dartmouth, Fiedler out of the pocket. Flipping it off, caught by Taylor, has the first down, and then is brought down by Damon Sidney after a gain of 18 yards, eight seconds to play. Jacksonville with two timeouts. Clock is stopped. They're still a little too far away for the Hail Mary type throw. With eight seconds, they have time to go to the sideline for about a 12 or 15 yard gain and then throw the Hail Mary. Hollis has kicked a field goal this year of 50 yards. They do have two timeouts remaining. Hollis has made 34 consecutive field goals inside the 40, but he's got a way to go right here. It's Fiedler taking over for the injured Brunel on the 43. Runs outside, chased by Thornton, throws down the sideline, incomplete, no yellow on the field. One second on the second quarter clock. He was aiming for Jimmy Smith. It'll be second down. Actually, Jack, he's going to go right down around the sideline. Let's see if there's contact before that ball gets there. Ooh. The only way you'd rule that not interference would be there was an uncatchable pass, but they got some hands on that one. Not a reviewable play, however. Look how deep they're playing, Kevin. They've got safeties on the one-yard line all the way back Unbelievable. to the one-yard line. Second down 10, four receivers platooned by Fiedler. Given time, winds up, goes deep down the side, shy of the goal line, and out of bounds, incomplete. Well, a flag has been thrown. A flag is down back at the 32-yard line. They're calling roughing the passer. That'll give Jacksonville one more shot. You can't end the half on a penalty like that. Walt Coleman trying to get everybody back on the field because Jackson, especially Tennessee, they headed right on in. Some of the Jacksonville players were already in the locker room. 
Not third and short. Personal foul. 91 of the defense rubbing the passer. 15 yards. First down. Josh Evans. Jay Fiedler, this is the Hail Mary, just trying to buy enough time for his receivers to get down the field more than anything else. Let's it go. Ooh. And then the hit. I don't know. You know, I mean, it, it, Pretty that, close. it was close. That's not a true helmet to helmet, certainly. And he hit him above the waist. Everything he asked, it looked like a one step hit. It wasn't late, late. He did get the ball off before he was hit. Well, if you try to field goal, it'd be about 60 yards. Right now, they're on the 42. Following the penalty, this will be the first half's final play. Oh, and he's sacked. Javon Kurtz, the number one sack man in the AFC, and the first rookie defensive end in the AFC going to the NFL as a starter in the Pro Bowl. Beeler steps up and to his right. Javon Kurtz comes off the block by Leon Searcy. And that's all she wrote. There's never been a rookie who has more sacks than Curse in the history of the NFL. Best game of the season so far this year for Steve McNair. Tennessee on top of Jacksonville, 24 to 7. Kevin Harlan alongside Sam Weich. Word from the Jacksonville locker room, Mark Brunel will not return. He has sprained his left knee out for the game, so Jay Fiedler now will have to lead him back. Remember, last year he had the rib injury at the end of the season, missed three games or so right before the playoffs. Big factor in their playoff. Now, they're going to make the playoffs. Obviously, they've already had a clinch, but how far they go now is affected. Well, let's take a look at some of the halftime numbers, some interesting things as we see the uh, total yards, 278 for Tennessee over Jacksonville and the big turnover by the Jaguars. Well, you never thought that Tennessee would dominate Jacksonville like this. We thought this would be a tight ball game between two excellent teams. But we saw Steve McNair throw three touchdown passes in the first half. And, of course, Fred Taylor on the one touchdown run for Jacksonville. The, the thing that's happened in this ball game that we didn't expect was just the dominance by an offense, Tennessee, against a very good Jacksonville defense. We begin the second half with the kickoff. Taken by Alvis Whitted near the one-yard line, weaving his way up field and by the 20. And down about the 21. Terry Killers makes the tackle. There's the playoff situation one more time. This is what is at stake for Jacksonville. They could have, uh, with a win today, AFC uh, Central Division title. It's not over yet, obviously. And of course, if Indianapolis were to lose their tie, they get the home field all the way through the playoffs. Tennessee's win, if they continue their 24-7 lead, guarantees them at least that first game at home in the playoffs where they are 7-0 and on their way to 8-0 if they play the way they did in the first half. Lee Fiedler, the quarterback, from the 21. Oh, my goodness, everybody is jumping. Now the question is, was Tennessee induced? Ben Coleman looked like he moved early, the guard. Prior to the snap, false start. 62 offense five yards still first down you know Tom Coughlin goes in there at halftime gives him the the best speech he can to get him back on track and in the first play you have a mistake Ben Coleman jumping here it's so frustrating for the coaches you can't do anything now but go to the things you practiced all week you can't wholesale change your game plan because your quarterback's out you just tighten it up a little First and 15, pushed back to the 16-yard line. Fred Taylor, the call, falls down at the 17-yard line. Blaine Bishop and Jason Fisk were there, a gain of one. Fiedler is in his fourth year out of Dartmouth. He has thrown a touchdown pass this year and no interceptions and very limited play. Here's what I used to do with a quarterback like this. I'd always have basically another play sheet. And those are the plays that I knew he had confidence in. I talked it over with him during the week. And he would practice those things. Sometimes it was the after practice work that he got that he uh, that he practiced. But these are the plays you go to now, especially early with him in the game. Great point. Second down, 14. Pocket crumbles outside. Passes dropped by running back Fred Taylor. He's been injured this year with ribs and mainly a hamstring. And now it'll be third down. The other thing you hope happens for a young for a quarterback stepping in early is that somebody makes a play at the other end of the throw. Fred Taylor did not make one for him right there. It's amazing what confidence it is for the quarterback if the other guy makes the play for you. 
Jacksonville's had five third downs. Four were third and ten or more. This one's third and 14. From the 17. Good block by Searcy. The pass high and incomplete. McCardell was at the opposite end at about the 36 yard line. Incomplete pass. Fiedler can't do anything with it on his first series of the second half. And Jacksonville, with the best record in the NFL, with 13 and 1, will have to punch. And the officials have there's a football on the field. There they go. Now somebody sees it. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have one ball in play at a time. Well, they got, you know, the different balls. They have K balls, they have game balls. That's that, a game ball that left and a K ball just came out. That's exactly what happened. And the game ball was a little tardy there getting off the field. K ball is a kicking ball, which is not broken in. Slippery and stiff. Here's the kick by Barker driving Mason back to about the 33 yard line. He got a block and then he's brought down by Dave Thomas. The longtime Jaguars, six yard return after the best punt of the day by Brian Barker sailing 50 yards. He needed that one. Tennessee 24 to 7. Kevin Harlan, Sam White here in Nashville. A three touchdown passing performance so far from McNair. First game he's been healthy in two and a half years playing against Jacksonville and is showing up. He's been banged up a lot this year, but he feels good. And he's had three touchdown passes to show for him. The yard line, first and ten. Here comes Marks. There goes the pass. The blitz was on. The pass incomplete. Whitecheck was downfield. It'll be second down and ten. And log on to NFL.com and vote for the NFL Player of the Century. Who's your pick? Vote now on NFL.com. Who's your pick? I'm going to say Michael Jordan. Ooh, that's who I'm going to say. Was it? Did he want NFL player? Or did he want? What did he want? It's just athlete of the year, wasn't it? No NFL. NFL player. player? You listen All to right, what well I'm that... saying here for goodness sake. Okay, six. I still want Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and ten from the 38. Eddie George cuts inside, finds a seam, and there he goes inside at the 50. He gets it to the 48, picks up 14 yards with a slashing move. Renee Stewart with the tackle. Right guard, right tackle. Just watch these two guys right here. One little sidestep, and then they're going sideways. See, they're not going up the field. They're just measuring their guy, and they, the term they use is cover up your defender. Just try to get my jersey on your jersey and let Eddie George run off those blocks. Jacksonville has not allowed an opposing rusher 100-yard game, 69 yards right now for Eddie George. First and 10 from the 47 of Jacksonville. George again. Down the middle he goes. Mengi was there. Kevin Hardy, gain of one. Second down, nine. This looked like earlier in the ball game when they came out just pounding away, dominating at this line of scrimmage. Both coaches told us that this is where it'd be won in a game like this. Turnovers and penalties always play a role in every game, but in a game like this, it's those big linemen working. Sam, there's Jeff Fisher. He used to play for the Chicago Bears, was a good friend of Walter Payton, the late Walter Payton. And in fact, he said during off seasons they would hunt and fish together, so we had a special relationship with him. Well, he's a guy that's played this game. Of course, played for the Chicago Bears. You mentioned 85, played with the Super Bowl team. Right. Second down, nine. Blitz is on by Hardy. And up the middle from Smiggy, and the pass is short of the fullback, Lorenzo Neal. Well, they're bringing the house every time against McNair. Well, their choices are narrowing now on the defensive side of the ball. They've got to get the ball back quickly. They're down enough points here that they're they need one or two more opportunities with the ball in the second half than you would normally get. And the way you do it is you try to get that offense of Tennessee off the field with three and out a few times. See Tom Coughlin. That sheet he's got right there is just loaded with plays, situations, red zone calls, goal line calls, third down calls, so he can find the play he wants right And away. he calls the plays. He's, he's, well, when, they, well, when Jacksonville's on offense, defensively, Tom, or Doc Capers, of course, is in charge of it. Third down and nine. Here comes the blitz again outside. They beat it with Eddie George. Goes into Kevin Hardy, but shy of the first down. He is inside the 41, picking up five. Hardy with the tackle. But shy of a first down, and they're going to be out of range for Aldo Del Greco. So Jacksonville's defense holds, and they'll have to uh, punt 
Tennessee will with Craig Hendrick. Now, he has perfected, Sam, a knuckleball kick, one with a lot of English on it. Well, the ball is just like a golf shot where you're going to put a lot of uh, backspin on the ball. Very good inside the 20. Had a terrific year. And anytime you can change field position, you can force your opponent to march more than 80 yards to score. You've reduced their chances of scoring by oh, oh, it's a fake. Here's Hendrick, a former high school quarterback, running, diving, and shy of the first down. He did not get it. Shy by about a yard. Seth Payne was there stopping. Do you like the call? I don't particularly like the call, but I'm looking down at a note right here that Jeff Fisher said to us yesterday, we're not going to hold anything back in this ball game. The reason I don't like the call is it's 24 to 7 right now. Just maintain the status quo and you go away winning. Right down the sideline. Let's see if we can see where he steps out of bounds right there. there. Good call. Good call by the referees. A little trickery by the Titans. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. The United States Army, be all you can be. And by Zocor. Talk to your doctor about Zocor today. With Sam White, Kevin Harlan, we're here in Nashville. From the 40-yard line, first and 10 for Jacksonville. Hendrick on the fake, couldn't get the first down on the plunge. Jay Fiedler taking the place of the injured Mark Brunel. Brunel in the locker room with a sprained left knee. First and 10. And Fiedler right to work. With time down the middle, he's got Jones wide open in complete pass. And tight end Damon Jones was there, and he had room to roam. You're a Second coach on the sideline, boy. You're leaning, hoping that ball drops in there. Head him wide open, and you're absolutely right. So it's second down and 10. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS brings together the playoff puzzle with outstanding games. Cincy, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Buffalo, Oakland, Kansas City. Sam and I will have Seattle and the Jets. Miami, Washington late in Tennessee against Pittsburgh, beginning with the NFL today. 12 noon next Sunday on CBS. If this score holds up, that Cincinnati-Jacksonville game will be big for the Tennessee Titans. Fred Taylor is stuffed and with no place to run. They have Baron Worthen and Jason Fisk right there making the stop. Taylor's longest carry today, over 40 yards. Worthen makes the stop there. You know, if, if this score holds up now and Jacksonville loses and Cincinnati comes into Jacksonville were to knock them off and Tennessee beat Pittsburgh next week, Suddenly, Tennessee wins this division. They win the division. Two Tennessee wins, two Jacksonville losses. You're exactly right. Now, third down and 10. And the ball resting at about the 40. The blitz is on. Fiedler back. He's grabbed and brought down by Josh Evans. The third set today. Offered. He got in there so hard, he, he lost his hat. And there'll be no penalty for that because that's what it was. He didn't take it off. It just came off. That's the third there second right there. The defense. They got a little game going now. They got a little working. He breaks clean straight up the chute. The guard actually just turns away from him, looking for the slide or looking for somebody to come around the corner. Oh, the official fell down as he... <laughs> we'll watch it out on the field now, but... Josh yeah. Evans, what a start and what a play that one was. The Barker punt with the rush on from Dorsett, who has blocked the punt in San Francisco earlier this year. That's caught by Mason, who in a thicket of Jacksonville defenders eats the ball at the 39-yard line. Renee Stewart, who played for Miami last year, and Jason Kraft, 29, were right there. Kevin, Tennessee got away with a fake punt, and I can pretty well assure you, you won't see that again <laughs> in this ball game. <laughs> Gosh, those kids have got to be proud, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> that is somebody's father from the 39. First and 10 for McNair has had a great day. Three touchdown passes and a huge game for both teams. Checking at the line. Looking for George. Now down the middle to Whitecheck, who's grabbed by Donovan Darius, who drills him after a gain of two to the 41. Second down and eight with Sam White. Kevin Harlan, surprised by this game? I'm surprised by the score. I thought two good football teams playing in a game with so much importance, it would be neck and neck. But Steve McNair's had such a good day. He's completed 10 passes, now 11 passes to his tight end. 
He's only hit eight incompletions and three of those were dropped. So you don't get a lot better than that in a big game. McNair now 19 of 26, almost 200 yards, second down and eight. On the 41. Comes the blitz. Hardy comes from one side. The pass outside caught by Chris Sanders, who's wrapped up and brought down by number one pick Fernando Bryan after a gain of five. Busy day in the NFL. Let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Quite a story today at Cleveland, Kevin. Up eight, the Browns on the goal line trying to stop the Colts, but Edger and James gets it across. He, however, is denied on a two-point try, so the Browns lead by two. Let's go back to you. Yeah, well, thank you, Jim. A win gives the Colts 13 wins, which Sam would be a 10-game improvement from a 3-13 and record a season ago. Incredible story written by Jim Mora. That talented team, third and three from the 46, chased by Hardy. McNair throws down the sidelines, caught but caught out of bounds by third-year Kansas Jayhawk Isaac Bird. Incomplete, and Jacksonville's defense holds for a second consecutive time. Well, it's their only chance to get it back into this ball game is get Tennessee's offense off the field quick. Tennessee had the ball for over 20 minutes in the first half. They control the clock like that. They walk away with the win. Now, let's just see if there's a chance of a fake punt right here by Craig Hendricks. <laughs> just one chance in a million. A million dollar punter, Craig Hendricks. That's what Tennessee had to give him to lure him away from Green Bay. Kicked at Notre Dame in college. And the rush is on. The punt is high. Down the middle. McCardell from the 10 by the first wave. Running outside and finally brought down by Greg Favors. A 44-yard punt. Nine-yard return by McCardell. Hendrick does his job, his team doing their job, 24-7. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. And by DirecTV. What are you looking at? Kevin Arlen, Sam White, Nashville, Tennessee, with three touchdown passes from McNair. Brunel is out, sprain left knee. Jay Fiedler is in. He played for the Vikings in a backup role a season ago. On the 19, first and 10, fake handoff. Outside, he spins. That's dropped by tight end Damon Jones. Second down and 10. That was the seventh offensive play for Jacksonville in this half. They are minus six yards on their seven plays. No first downs. And Tennessee is not exactly what uh, Jeff Fisher. They are not holding back anything. And if you're wondering about uh, Jay Fiedler, and if that last name sounds familiar, yes, he is a distant relative of the late former conductor of the Boston Cops, Arthur Fiedler. He's orchestrating his offense now. He's one of seven. Second down and ten, shy of the 20. There he goes. Turns a pass, which is caught by Jones, coughed up, but he was down. A gain of nine, close to a first down, and he splits two defenders with a pinpoint pass to his tight end, Jones. And Tuesday on CBS, the medical miracle gave him a new identity. The only catch you can never tell the family he left behind. This is your chance to see now and again on a special day in time, Tuesday at 10, 9 Central, here on CBS. That's a good show. Very good. They're going to measure Sam and see how close he is. I don't think he's got quite enough for it, but they can call for the measure. Jay Fiedler, of course, replacing Mark Brunel. Remember a year ago, Brunel was out three regular season games there towards the end. And the problem is, you know, they could play without Mark Brunel next week. They're in the playoffs. They've got that all wrapped up. The problem, of course, is that when they get in the playoffs, he won't be 100% healthy as he was not a year ago. Fiedler, as we mentioned back in the first half, has played this year, although in a limited role, he directed a come-from-behind win week six in Jacksonville against the Cleveland Browns. And next week, he'll meet another team from Ohio, Cincinnati Bengals, and Jeff Fisher told us the other day, he said, you know, there's one team I would not want to play after week 12, and that's Cincinnati, and they are coming on hard. Of course, he was setting everybody's mind to thinking there because if Cincinnati knocks them off, and... Tennessee beats Pittsburgh. They could actually still win this division. It's third and inches from the 29. Changing the play. Play clock at one. Gets it off. 
It goes to the running back, Taylor, who tries to slither to the first down. Sam, I think he's short again by about the length of the football, much to the dismay of Jacksonville coach Tom Coughlin. Well, it's very tough to change a play in this stadium with a crowd going crazy on third and short and get everybody the word. You may be able to get the word to the center and the guards who can hear you because you're right there with them, but the backs have to step up. you got to turn around and tell them there's just too many opportunities for miscommunication, and then you leave a little uncertainty, and you leave a little short. And for Jacksonville, without their quarterback, Mark Grinnell, their third consecutive three and out. This offense of Jacksonville came in number seven, but they have not looked like that in on defense. They're much the same thing. They're coming in number two in the NFL today, and they have not looked good on defense. Well, they're playing a good team, so a good teams can make you look, you know, not as, not as strong as you have been all year long. But this is a little bit too early to be taking a chance and going for it on fourth down if you're Jacksonville. And Tennessee has played a great game. They've just played well. They've had only one drive. That one drive towards the end of the first half for Wycheck stretched for a first down by inches. McNair had the roughing the quarterback on the sideline, and then Jackie Harris uh, was stripped of the ball, and it was reversed. The play was reversed. That's the only series that they really had some things going for them other than things they created themselves. Great kick by Parker. Fair caught back at the 30-yard line by Mason. A 41-yard punt. Tennessee undefeated at home, leading 24-7. Well, if their offense is struggling, Jacksonville's defense has played pretty good in this half. Well, they have. Kevin Hardy has been lining up. You see him wearing that neck harness. He had a contact with Tony Brackens last week. But he's lining up on the end of the line of scrimmage a lot, just trying to get one more guy up into the backfield of Tennessee. Has not paid off. Jacksonville's defense has only allowed 29 yards in this second half after struggling in the first, and flags are all over the field. Nine plays for Tennessee, just 29 yards in the second half. Encroachment on the defense, number 94. Five yards, still first down. Rookie Larry Smith out of Florida State. Just changed the octave, one up. Quarterback will go hut, hut. You hear that? Once you just throw something about the different sound, it doesn't have to be any louder or any quicker to the first call. Just change the sound of it, and it'll bring them across. Now first and five from the 30. Play action. Here comes Hardy. There goes the pass by the near. He's got Burr downfield. Breaks the tackle of Bryant. Breaks the tackle of Darius. Touchdown. Oh, what a play. Straight down the field, Isaac Byrd caught a touchdown last week from Frank Wycheck. This time, Steve McNair. McNair rolling out to his right, bought enough time. That's excellent running after the catch, too. That's conceding nothing. A lot of receivers, their legs will go dead when they run that far to catch the ball. They make sure of the catch and their legs don't stay going. He does. Extra point by Joe Krucko is in. The Tennessee offense is chewing up Jacksonville. And when you got a last name like Bird, baby, there's only one way to celebrate the end zone. 64-yard <laughs> touchdown pass to Isaac Bird, a sixth-round pick by Kansas City, went on their practice squad. And he has been starting for the injured Yancey Thigpen over the last five weeks and catches his second 60-yard touchdown pass in as many weeks, 61 yards last week, 64 yards right there. You know, when you're having a championship type year, the coaches are always uptight. They don't want anything to fall short late in the year. The players, on the other hand, they just have fun. Steve McNair shows you how to do it right there. Four touchdown passes from McNair and Jeff Fisher, who has had three consecutive eight and eight seasons and was on the hot seat coming into this season is zeroing in on the 12th win and maybe a home playoff game with it. Winning over Jacksonville if they go on to capture the game later today in the kickoff by Hendrick. 
Elvis witted at about the six-yard line for Jacksonville. Brought down by Doug Coleman, who knocked him off balance. Also, Perry Phoenix, number 35. One more time now, the AFC. Jacksonville, if they go to 13-2. and two. Indianapolis struggling there in uh, Cleveland. If Indianapolis would lose and Tennessee would win, home field is certainly up for grabs. Up for throughout grabs the playoffs. Absolutely. Indianapolis has got it in their hands up there playing a team they should be. Tennessee, though, is looking at it. If they win this game, which they are well on their way to doing, they'll be looking at a 1 o'clock game. If they'll be watching in Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, they play at 4 o'clock, so they'll know next week when they go into their game exactly what they have on their hands. On the 27, Brunel's out with a sprained left knee. Fiedler is in again, going deep. His receiver fell. This is intercepted by Samara Roll. His second. And he'll fly downfield, gets a block, and is all the way to the Jacksonville 37. The best team record-wise in the NFL is staggering. As Roll picks off his second interception of the day. Right now, Jacksonville wants to just go back to fundamentals. Don't leave this game looking like a team that's not completely organized, not completely under control. Oh, they want to go back to fundamentals. They probably want to go back to Florida. Well, they'd like to go back to Florida to work on those fundamentals, no question. This is not as bad a pass as it looks. The receiver does fall down, but it's an easy one. At the very end of this play, however, Number 87, Keenan McCardell gets into a little shoving match, which is really uncharacteristic of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you just want to go ahead and get this game, get back into it if you can, as best you can, but don't come away looking completely unjointed. On the Jacksonville 36, look at the time from in there. Swims a pass, which is incomplete. Darius was all over Kevin Dyson. Second down and 10. Back to Jim Nance we go in New York to our studio. All right, guys, it didn't happen until the fourth quarter, but we have a touchdown at last in Foxborough. It's Terry Allen scoring for the Patriots. Allen gets the touchdown there. They fumbled after he already crossed the goal line. Pats lead the Bills by seven. Let's go back to you. How about, thank you, Jim. How about this? New England has won four consecutive games against Buffalo in Foxborough. Bills can clinch a, clinch a playoff berth with the win and either a Miami loss or a Seattle loss. Second down and 10. And George off the left side. He's just going to try to pound away a little bit now. Eddie George is the kind of guy you want to have in your lineup with the lead, eating up the clock, controlling not only the clock but the, the ground yardage. Every coach says the same things. And just in November, late November, December, you have to be able to run the ball because you don't know what kind of weather you're going to run into. Perfect today, however. And you certainly five left, five. have to be able to finish a team off once you get the lead. You don't want to have to be running risky plays. 73 rushing yards for George. Jacksonville has not allowed a 100-yard rusher all season. Third down and eight. Inside the Jaguar 35. Here comes the rush by Boyer. Moving up nicely as the quarterback. He throws to his tight end, Whitechuck. Another first down. He picks up 10 on third down and eight. They have been almost perfect on third down. This time they had Michael Rohn and Jackie Harris sitting together, the two tight ends. Jackie Harris runs up a couple of yards past the first down marker, just turns to the outside. And Steve McNair, look at those numbers today. Just steps up and gives everybody a chance to get open and delivers the ball right to the correct side of the jersey. He had to put that one in tight, too. He's having a career day inside the Jacksonville 25, first and 10. And off to George. Breaks one tackle of Boyer. Breaks another tackle of Brackens. And then finally chased down from behind and brought down by Renee Stewart, a gain of nine. Yep, they're that close to a first down and sealing a win. And here's what I'm seeing different in Jacksonville now as opposed to earlier in the game. At the end of the play, you see one or two players around the, the ball carrier. Earlier in the game, it was gang tackling. You're still seeing that game ta gang tackling by Tennessee. Cleveland on top of the Colts. Patriots just scored, as Jim just told us, on top of Buffalo. Bills are 9-5. and five. Second down and one. 
inside the 15-yard line. Two tight ends in the game. It's George with a nice block from Lorenzo Neal, but no gain on the play. Payne was there with the tackle. The fact that they don't make the first down right there is not a concern to Jeff Fisher because it just means one more play, another 40-some-odd seconds off the clock. Try to put this team away. You know, these two teams could meet again in the playoffs. Right. And the balance of the, this game, the way that next week goes, could decide who's going to play in whose stadium in that playoff game. Third and one quarterback sneak by McNair, and I think Sam, he nudged the pile up. He didn't get the first down. Now on third downs today, Jeff Fisher's Tennessee Titans have gone 9 of 13. That is an outstanding number. Jeff Fisher told us the other day, he said, I want to build this team. The things I look for are character. That's a priority. We want people we can depend on in the clutch. They are doing it today. Speed, especially at the corners with size, because you're seeing so many big wide receivers. And then I want somebody that can stop the run up the middle. And boy, early in this ball game, it was done. Jason Fisk, Josh Evans, all of them doing a terrific job. On the 13, seventh play of the drive. First and 10, McNair down the middle. It's caught by Dyson. He's inside the five. Kevin Dyson, number 87, just coming on a little shallow cross, catches it. Now he's going to turn up the field. First thing you do, get up the field as fast as you can. Look at the effort at the very end of the jump. And then when he goes for the old uh, Tennessee version of the Lambeau Leap, they have to have some teammates <laughs> help push him up. It's all fun when you're winning. And John uh, Brecco will try the extra point. It's perfect, much like this day has been for Tennessee. 324 to play here in the third. Titans on a five touchdown pass performance from Steve McNair. Our buzz sawing through the Jaguars 38 to 7. Who would have thought it would have been this lopsided? And who would have thought he couldn't get all the way up without help? <laughs> there comes the help! There we go. <laughs> Push him. And the welcoming party. Oh man. And Steve McNair, what a terrific day he's had. Not just throwing the football, he couldn't do much better than he has, but keeping the team in the right place and running the ball when he had to. Well, you have these days every so often when everything you do seems to click, you're right in sync, and sometimes you'll catch a team that is very good, obviously Jacksonville is, that is not in sync, and they have not been today. They didn't look like they were quite ready. It's not a knock on the coaches getting them ready or anything. Teams is 56 players or so. By the time you count the guys that are on the cap squad, 46 of them dress. It's tough to get them all together every week in the NFL. And the kickoff by Hendrick is away, a line drive, which will take Alvis Whitted back to about his two-yard line for Jacksonville. Gets a block from Shelton. Down the sideline he goes. He got a block on the play. And the fastest Jaguar, Elvis Witted, is going to go the entire way, 98 yards. It's been forever since Tennessee has allowed a kickoff return for a touchdown. Your speed coming up the field. Alvis with it. Once he breaks through, actually lost a little speed there before he was clearly in the open. No substitute for pure speed, Kevin. But this also demonstrates something. They're a championship football team. They're down by a lot of points, but they're not out of it in their minds. Miles with the extra point. 98-yard return by Alvis Witted. <laughs> Not since 1990 when this team was known as the Houston Oilers have they allowed a kickoff return for a touchdown. Fireworks here. 
coach. And Nance talks about some fireworks. Let's go back to him in our NFL studios in New York. All right, guys, an interesting issue right now is the home field issue because look what's happening at Cleveland. Terry Kirby scores, and the Browns are up nine inside of 12 minutes remaining. By the way, with Orlando Brown out today, Cleveland's enjoying its best rushing performance of the season. Back to Kevin and Sam. Thank you, Jim. Again, Cleveland has not won at home all season long, coming in 2-13. and 13. The Colts, who Sam have won 10 consecutive games, are in, but they want that home field. And Jim, with the good note there, home field is certainly up for grabs now. But the way Jeff Fisher is, he has clinched at least one home playoff game if he can continue the way he's going right now and beat Jacksonville today. With a bigger prize possibly in his hands next week, depending on the outcome, Cincinnati at Jacksonville, Jack, uh, Tennessee at Pittsburgh. Eric Mason deep back. Kickoff will come from Steve Lindsay. Little pooch kick, high and short. And taken by Isaac Bird, who just caught the touchdown pass, and he's up to the 36 yard line. So we'll see this outstanding. I think Neil O'Donnell is set to check in for the Tennessee Titans. McNair is finished with his five touchdowns and Neil O'Donnell will check in, and he is a guy that, when McNair was out, Sam, earlier in the season, was outstanding 4-1 and one as a starter. Good move by Jeff Fisher. I like this. The reason is you've got the game in hand. Neil O'Donnell's a veteran quarterback. Get him a little bit of work in the event you're going to need him in the playoff. He's quarterback the Super Bowl team in Pittsburgh with the Jets, Cincinnati last year, and now Tennessee from the 36. Neil, Neil was the quarterback when they beat Jacksonville for their only loss. That's Got right. This game. It's George for no gain on the play. Second down. Yeah, that's a very good point. To the game-winning touchdown pass to Michael Rome. That's right. That's why I stepped all over you when yeah, I was trying to get the word in. It's all right. There. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Just keep on talking, talking, talking. <laughs> he had a good day. You uh, going into the, this ball game? Five touchdown passes now. Remember, you, you pointed out the last seven games he's only had a touchdown pass one last week against Atlanta. So he turned on the juices when they needed to. Second down and 10 from the 36 for new quarterback Neil O'Donnell. Blitz is on by Smitty, and the pass is caught outside by Dyson. Aaron Beasley was covering on the play. It's a gain of six. Here's the NFC playoff picture. One more time. Now, St. Louis, they're in 12 and 2. Tampa Bay holding the edge now, mainly because teams like Detroit and uh, Minnesota have fallen here, have lost games. Detroit, of course, losing this week. Green Bay will play Tampa Bay today. That's a huge game. Dallas is staggering, losing to New Orleans yesterday. St. Louis at 12 and 2. Third down and four from the 41. O'Donnell in the pocket. And throws a quick dart to his tight end. Frank Whitecheck gain is seven. And he does tumble ahead to a first down up at the 47-yard line. Neil O'Donnell is very good at this passing game. The short, quick throws. He's got a quick release, a high release. You have to keep the ball up when you're throwing the ball. Only eight to ten yards down the field, especially if it's not all the way to the sideline. Too many hands can jump up there and knock it down. Got some pretty good backups here, huh? And Chris Chandler for a while, Dave Craig last year, Neil O'Donnell now. I think probably Neil O'Donnell and Dave Craig were their favorites of that group, mainly because they had them playing in support roles with Steve McNair. Chris Chandler didn't quite fit that role as well as the other two. After Whitecheck's ninth catch of the day, which is a first down, Eddie George dancing inside the 50 and falling down to the 45 and a face mask after the gain of six. Bryce Pop made the tackle. It is the face mask. Let's see if it's the garden variety or the big one. Five yards or 15. What will they decide? That's what they're figuring out right now. Face mask, 95 on the defense. Five yards, first down. You normally have to see the head snap around before you get to 15 yards. If it's just a little bit of a hand in there, they're going to protect you. I don't know that his head. I it think was he almost was almost incidental. Yeah, he was kind of in a twist himself. His hand was up there around. It looked like two or three guys actually had it, their hands rake across his face mask. But how about the running effort? This point in the ball game by Eddie 
George. This guy doesn't slow down for anything. 88 yards on the 41, first and 10. Good time for O'Donnell. Throws the pass caught by Dyson. Breaks a tackle of Beasley on his horse and down to the 19, make it the 17th yard line. It's a 25 yard gain. Lonnie Marks with the tackle, and that should take us to the fourth quarter in what has been a stunning performance by the Titans. And they're not running it up right now. They're just giving Neil O'Donnell some work in the passing game, and there's still a full quarter to play. You can't tighten up and pull your horns in at this point. Well, the screws are tightening, and the Central Division is still up for grabs as Tennessee is rolling. On plays like this, to Isaac Bird after three, it's all Tennessee. We begin the fourth quarter with Sam White, Kevin Harlan, Neil O'Donnell taking the place of McNair, who threw five touchdown passes. First down from the 17, and on Eddie George, busting free. And with the burst, he accelerates down to the nine, picking up seven. And He's now over 90 yards, Sam, on the day. I suspect they'll keep him in until he gets that 100-yard mark, and then he'll come out, just like Steve McNair did. But that offensive line, I will guarantee you, they looked each other in the eye and said, let's get him 100 yards as fast as we can. Get him on the sideline ready to go. There's Steve McNair right there. Five touchdown passes today. That is a career high. He played about as well as any quarterback can play against a quality defense. Second down three, George with 95 yards, two tight ends. George again, a block from Harris, still on his feet, gaining perhaps two yards on the play. Down to the eight, Donovan Darius with the tackle. You know, the other interesting point here, we thank Ken Mack, our able assistant, for thinking of this, is that the backup situation for both these teams, Neil O'Donnell's already gone four and one this year. They could put him in now. Of course, he's not in there because of an injury he's in there because uh, it's just time to take Steve out McNair out of the game but on the other side of the ball Jacksonville not nearly in as good a situation with their backup quarterback Jay Peeler is a good player but he's not as good and certainly not as experienced as Neil O'Donnell nor is Jonathan Quinn that other guy number 12 who's standing there it's third down a short two from the eight of Jacksonville following the block of Neil it's George trying to creep his way Swing his way for a first down, and he had, to, he had to get to the six, and that's where he is. Ronaldo Wynn makes the tackle. And if the spot is true, and it's worth looking at it right now, it looks like it is a first down. Yep, they got it. First and goal. Bring in two wide, two more wide receivers. Lorenzo Neal comes out of the ball game. They're going to spread them out a little bit, but my guess is they're going to give it right back to Eddie George. 98 yards for George. So he can get his 100 before they reach the end zones. They're on the six. Officially 98 yards. First and goal, George. Tackled, spins, and he's to the four. Hit initially by Walker and finally finished off by Lonnie Marks and Seth Payne. Still going with the wide, extra wide receivers in the ball game, but second down. Still going to give this ball to Eddie George. They're going to pound it in there as long as they can. Two things are happening, of course. They're just eating that clock up. And, of course, they are hoping they can get Eddie George's 100 on this drive and not have to put him back in the game on the next series. Second down, goal at the four. It's to George. Got a block from Rollins. Splits it inside. He has 100 yards. He's down to inside the two, picking up two, Hardy and Marks with the tackle. And now that offensive line is going to look each other in the eye one more time and say, all right, all the way in the end zone, everybody finish your blocks off. One of my favorite words in this sport is finish, and that is exactly what they have to do right now. First 100-yard rusher, Jacksonville's defense is allowed all season. Yeah, we haven't seen... Tennessee beating up on a, a weak sister here. This is one of the, the best, I think, the best football team in football in the NFL right now Ten is Jacksonville, Tennessee, Manhattan. Third and goal from the two, and it is deflected on a pass intended for Michael Rohn. Donovan Darius was defending on the play. I love this kid, Darius. Number one pick out of Syracuse last year. So O'Donnell cannot get his team in for six. They'll have to settle for three. 
Donovan Darius is, I think, a better physical guy than he is a cover guy. Can do both of them. Boy, last year when he was a rookie playing, he would come up and just knock into the third row. No fear at all. Del Brickos made a 30-yard field goal. This will be a 20-yard try. Hendrick the hold on the Bruce Matthews snap, and it's good. So Del Greco goes two of two. And Tennessee builds the lead. A stunning 41-14 advantage. Kevin Arlen, Sam White. There's Alvis Witted. Last time we saw him, he was returning a kickoff 98 yards for a touchdown. And he looked good doing it. Straight up the field. Your return guys have to be willing to go straight up the field. Dodge people still moving north and south. And they're going to kick purposely away from Witted here. And it is picked up by Jaguar Corey Chamblin who is a little-used reserve, a rookie free agent from Tennessee Tech who was in camp with Baltimore, and he was signed off the Jacksonville practice squad not too long ago. It's CBS's greatest sports moments coming up this week. The Leitner jump shot in Philadelphia. Nancy Kerrigan, Kirby Puckett, John Elway. CBS's greatest sports moments, Thursday night, 8, 7 Central. And there'll be a lot more great sports moments leading up all the way to the AFC Championship this year with AFC as strong as it is. Mark Brunel has missed the entire second half with a sprained left knee. Jay Fiedler is in. Loops one down the sideline. Incomplete. Aiming for Jimmy Smith, who has 99 catches on the year, but just one today. Denard Walker was covering second down and 10. Walker is step for step. Look at his hips turned early, and now he's looking at the receiver. He can sense when the ball's about there, but he's running. When he's got a player that close to the sideline, he doesn't really have to worry about anything except the receiver trying to come back underneath him. That's why you don't take your eyes off the receiver in that situation. And only thrown to Smith three times today. Second down, 10 from the 34. It's Taylor outside. Getting a block from Baselli. And then belts it at about the line of scrimmage. A call to gain maybe of a half yard. So it'll be third down. Coming up on the American General Post Game Show, Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry will get you caught up on all the scores, all the highlights, recap of all today's action in the NFL, all coming up on the American General Post Game Report. The guys will be talking about and reviewing all the ramifications of the wins and losses. This late in the season is a big swing every time somebody hits a field. It's third and ten. Outside the 33, near the 34. Smith is on the move. Fiedler for the injured Brunel. Sets got a block from Coleman. Throws it. It's not free. Smith had an incomplete pass in midfield. Incomplete pass in midfield. Marcus Robertson put the anvil on Smith. Ball caught free. Three and out for Jacksonville again. Smith is going to go in motion, then up, and then back across the field. This is really a good play for Jay Fiedler. He took his, he was in trouble in the backfield, running out of time, still delivered the ball perfectly down the middle. It wasn't successful, but for his own personal development, and he may have to play a little bit more, not only this ball game, but possibly next week, depending on how Mark Brunel's injury, his knee strain, turns out. Jacksonville, almost blocked by Killens. On his away by Barker and retrieved by Mason at the 25-yard line, 42-yard punt. Jacksonville still without a first down in the second half because of that guy's defense. Time out. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Prudential, your rock-solid choice for insurance, investments, real estate, and financial services. And by Rogaine, extra strength for men. Gorgeous view of downtown Nashville, and what a great day that Eddie George had, 102 yards, and part of Tennessee's 41-14 ROP over Jacksonville. And Rodney Thomas will get a chance to play now for yes. Tennessee. That's, a, that's enough. That's one of the luxuries when you've got a lead like this. You can start to rest your players, make sure those injuries aren't exposed. Neil O'Donnell, first down and 10, hand off Rodney Thomas, and he corkscrews his way up to the 30 on a gain of five. You know, Thomas, was the leading rusher as a rookie back in 95. 
Then they drafted Eddie George in 96, and he's been a backup since. Well, that's what happens when you bring in a, a star football player, but this is a quality football player. They don't really step off any cliffs with Thomas in the field, on the field. Look at the Colts coming back on Cleveland. Indianapolis knows what's at stake up there. Boy, look cold in Cleveland today. Tied at 10, Buffalo, New England. Second down and five from the third. O'Donnell, handoff once again to Thomas. He played at Texas A&M, gains a yard. Donovan Darius makes the tackle, along with Lonnie Martz. Lonnie Martz, in contact with Rodney Thomas. You could hear it all the way up here. The crowd's a little quiet right now, enjoying the afternoon. But that's what, that's not helmet to helmet contact, that's body to body, muscle to muscle, bench press to bench press. I just saw when Minnesota was destroying the New York Giants. Giants could be out of the playoff race if they lose today. They played a few weeks ago so well against the New York Jets. Just blew them out. Haven't done, played as well since. Third and four from the 31. O'Donnell with the time. Goes outside and complete looking for Chris Sanders. Covered by Aaron Beasley. And so Tennessee has got a punt with uh, 907 to play in this fourth quarter. Tennessee is the only team, Sam, that had beaten Jacksonville once coming into today. Now they're going to do it twice. Jacksonville came in 13 and 1. Well, if they do that, it'll, they'll be 8 0 here at the, their new stadium. Only Dallas, back when they uh, had their inaugural year at Texas Stadium, went 9 0. Charlotte went to uh, Carolina in Charlotte, went 8 0 their first year. So they step into the record books for the win here today that way. Hendrick gets it high. Fair caught McCardle at the 36. Jacksonville may be bracing themselves for a third consecutive loss to Tennessee. We're down now, 41 to 14. Season's greetings from all of us at CBS to all of you. Happy safe holiday travels, hopefully for all of you, with Sam White's Kevin Harlan. On the 36, Jay Fiedler in, Brunel is out. Twisting a knee back in the first half. On first and ten, fires a pass down the middle, caught by the leaping Jimmy Smith. His 100th catch of the season. It's a gain of 22. He torches Marcus Robertson. He go to the two-minute offense early. He's just going to bend to the inside right here. Good protection. Four-man rush. Tennessee's still bringing everybody. They're not into a three-man deep. They're kind of a prevent zone. This is zone. You see the cornerbacks and safeties all looking in front, keeping everything in front of them. That's the first first down of the second half for Jacksonville. Handoff to Taylor. Stops, cuts, drives, accelerates, and swims his way to the 35. Picking up seven. Tackle made by Phoenix. It'll be second down and three. And tonight on 60 minutes, if there were no nuclear weapons in the Gulf, how did American soldiers get exposed to radiation during the Gulf War? 60 minutes tonight, followed by a powerful touch by an angel. Then Carol Burnett, Walter Matthau, and John Stamos star in the CBS Sunday movie after Sam and his wife, The Marriage Fool, tonight <laughs> on CBS. We've got a few guys touched by an angel this year in the NFL. Dick Vermeil comes to mind right quick. Exactly. And this team, second down and three. Time for Fever. Great blocking up ahead by Wade and Tilski. And the run by Fiedler takes him for a first down, a gain of seven to the Tennessee 28. Eddie Robinson with the tackle. Good blocking by Tilson up, Tilski up front. Eddie Robinson, Joe Salavea, they almost let us see the third quarterback for Jacksonville today. Boy, that's risky running. When you get down there, just take your loss. You got to get big chunks. You don't need short yardage gains. First down from the Tennessee 28 for Jacksonville. And off goes to Taylor. Here it is his own block at the seven. And is tackled by Killings at about the 24. Gain of five on the play. Still mixing the running there. They didn't go to the two. Jacksonville did not go to their two-minute offense. No huddle. Hurry up. Try to get back in. They just up tempo. You see Jay Fiedler rolling his arm. Come on, guys. Get in the huddle. Let's keep moving now. Don't lose anything. The one thing you don't want to lose going into the playoffs is the attitude and the mentality that you had. Uh, coming into this game. Jonathan Quinn would be the next guy coming in. See him on the sidelines studying. Good chance he could play today. Second down, long five for the 24. Fiedler throws a pass again. It's on the money and caught at the 15-yard line by wide receiver Jimmy Smith. A gain of 10. Catch number 101 of the season. 
Here's what's at stake for the Titans. Guarantee them at least one home game in the playoffs. And we can see it's our first time in this stadium, their brand new stadium. What an advantage it is. They, the last five games, Kevin, they've had 18 of, of their opponents jump off sides just because the crowd noise was so loud. They couldn't hear the stat count of the opposition. Fiedler may be having trouble right now. Marooned at the 15, first down and 10. Here comes the blitz, picked up by Taylor to the end zone. Fiedler caught out of bounds. Caught out of bounds by Smith. Coverage applied by Denard Walker. Second down and 10. Jacksonville still has the quality players on the outside. Fiedler throws this ball behind on purpose to the back shoulder of Jimmy Smith. He's going to let the defender overrun it and try to come back. But you can see he was just a little bit out of bounds. See the burst? He sees the ball coming behind, doesn't give it up for it until the very end, but can't stay in bounds. Underthrown passes can be very effective, especially if you get defenders that are studying the receiver and not watching the ball. Second down, 10 from the 15. A lot of movement. They blow it there. Timeout, Tennessee. I think they were calling timeout, trying to. They got it. You're right. They were screaming and hollering timeout. Nobody listened. Timeout, Tennessee. First team timeout. Fisher trying to stay unbeaten at home, demolishing Jacksonville. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? And by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. Kevin Arlen, Sam White here in Nashville, 41-14, Tennessee, looking to go to 12-3. Jacksonville will probably drop to 13-2 and, and lose their first road game of the season. Second down and 10, seventh play of the Jacksonville drive. Fiedler there for the injured Grinnell from the 15. Draw play. A great block up ahead by Brady, and following that was Fred Taylor as Jason Fisk makes the stop after a gain of four. Tom Coughlin would love to see his team respond in a winning way. And they may not win this football game, but play like winners at the end. So much of this game is mental. It's emotional. It's an attitude going into each week as you prepare that you're still the best. You can beat anybody when you go out there. And if you come out of a game getting beat as badly as Jacksonville has today, feeling less of a team, it can affect you the next week. Jacksonville didn't play well last week against Cleveland. No, they didn't. They really had to struggle. Cleveland played well against him, but they struggled against the Cleveland Browns. Third and six. One of eight on third downs today. Fiedler, pocket, crumbling, hit. Brought down. Fumble on the play and recovered, I think, by Wiegert of Jacksonville, their guard at the 13. That is the fourth sack today by Tennessee. They are number three in the NFL in sacks. Jay Fiedler is just going to drop back, trying to find. This is a coverage sack as much as anything. The ball should be gone now. The defender, the blockers can't hold on that long. That time was Rich T uh, Tilski just couldn't hold on any longer. But when your quarterback has it over three and a half seconds, that's about it. That's all he can ask for. Fourth down, eight to go for Fiedler. At the 14 of, G of Tennessee. Here comes the blitz. Low snap, puts his on, he gets away from Killings. He throws a pass incomplete, and Tennessee takes over. Suffocating straight jacket defense by the Titans today. From the Titans' standpoint, Jeff Fisher's standpoint, you want to do exactly what I was talking about. Tom Coffin would like to see his team, but you want to finish this game like you started it, dominating your opponent. You may play this team again. These two may meet each other again in the playoffs, and the last thought you'll have will be the this ball game. Baltimore over Cincinnati. Some games are finishing up, close games finishing up now. Buffalo, New England, 10-10. Overtime, and remember, Adam Vinatieri of New England has kicked two game-winning field goals already this season. Pittsburgh and Carolina. Pittsburgh coming back, fighting back in this season. Minnesota wins. O'Donnell, first and 10 handoff goes to Thomas, who gains two yards on the play. Second down and eight. And tonight on 60 Minutes, there were no nuclear weapons in the Gulf. How did Americans and their soldiers get exposed to radiation during the Gulf War? That's all tonight on 60 Minutes. Now at the 16-yard line, second down and eight. I liked your comment before about the backup of Tennessee compared to the backup of Jacksonville. 
But Neil O'Donnell is a proven Super Bowl quarterback. Didn't have a real good game in that Super Bowl, but almost picked off there by Donovan Darius on a pass intended for Chris Sanders. Third down. Almost a scene out of that Super Bowl right there. <laughs> That's right. Threw too many interceptions. That's but, right. But Neil O'Donnell is a guy that has played, of course, with the Jets, with the Cincinnati Bengals, and Pittsburgh prior to all of that. And now here in Tennessee, he's been there. He's been in big games. He's won big games. He's played in all kinds of weather, which could be a plus. You never know his playoffs go. Although it looks like Indianapolis being inside, Jacksonville being warm weather would be the team, the only teams they would visit if uh, if they're not a home field themselves. Third down and eight. Hand off to the shifty Thomas. He's up past the 20, running hard to the 21, gaining five. But shy of a first down by three. Tennessee will have to punt. Tennessee has won two in a row, five of their last six. With the win today, they will clinch at least, Sam, one home playoff game. And that also keeps them alive for their hope in a Central Division title. If they win next week in Jacksonville, would lose next week. The central title goes to Tennessee. How about the quote from Jeff Fisher? I don't want to play Cincinnati after week 12 this year because they're playing too well. They'll be in Jacksonville. Hendricks punt. Lindsey Jackson was fiddled with. It's loose and penalty flags litter the field as they play Twister at about the 36. They were pretty casual with that ball. Yeah, that were. ball's alive. There was no whistle. Flags don't end the play. The whistle does. Everybody kind of just <laughs> pushed it around. You know, depending on the ruling, Tennessee could have come up, make him up with that ball. The job of the offense on that last series was to eat up as much clock as you can, as much as anything else. And now the officials are going to uh, talk about it. The question is, of course, was there interference with the receiving of the punt, or was it his teammate, one of the Jacksonville players, trying to block for the punt return that got in the way of? An easy catch or an unmolested catch. Tom Coughlin thinks he was interfered with, of course, and Jeff Fisher says it was your guy. Jacksonville was trying to win on the road for an eighth time this season, which would have made them only one of three franchises to do that. So that now is stricken. Their 11 game winning streak is gone. That was the longest in the NFL. Their best record in the NFL should be pretty safe. Depending on what the Colts do, are playing right now in Cleveland and losing by two with under 30 seconds to play. But the home field advantage, you cannot underestimate how important it is. I, I played in both, the and absolutely crucial to be at home. There is no foul on the play. The player was blocked into the fair catcher. We have first touching by Tennessee. Jacksonville's ball, first down. First down. Vanderjack. Vanderjack for the Colts has just kicked a game-winning field goal, and so the Colts win it, and they go to 13 and 2. They've won 11 consecutive games. They've clinched a first-round playoff bye, and they're AFC East champions for the first time since '87. And it wasn't easy up no. there in Cleveland. It they trailed the whole way. Yep. That's a good point. So Vander Jacks field goal wins it. Colts beat the Browns in chilly Cleveland this afternoon. Field. First and ten from the 36. And runs a pass down the side. Incomplete looking for Alvis Witted. Coverage by Sydney. Incomplete. Second down. Ten coming up on the American General Post Game Show. Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry will get you caught up on the scores and highlights. It's the American General Post Game Show next on CBS. And we'll get a chance to look at that Indianapolis field goal on that post game right. show. That one went back and forth. Indy fighting their way back into it. Cleveland playing, looking for their first win in their stadium. They didn't get one this year. Remember, their bye week is next week, so their season has been completed. This is the blitz. Second down and 10. Fiedler fires a pass, caught by Jimmy Smith. Gain of 10 on the play. Sydney was the man with the coverage on the far side. He should have a first down. Very close if he doesn't have it. Actually, he was beyond the first down and kind of stepped out of bounds the other way, but they give it to him. 
Sam Jacksonville will have seven players from their team in Honolulu with the Pro Bowl, including Jimmy Smith. Probably the furthest thing on their minds right now, though, because of the way they have played today. They, they haven't played without effort. They've just been outplayed by uh, the Tennessee Titans almost all day. First down, Fiedler in traffic. Throws a pass, hauled in by Kyle Brady. Their big tight end, who was a Jet starter for the last four years. Being a 14 on the play, Fiedler on the money. We're approaching the two-minute warning. These are important finishing plays for Jay Fiedler. If he has to go next week, this is like practice time for him. First and 10 from the Tennessee 40. Another pass, another catch made by the tight end, Brady, who's missed the last three weeks with the knee. Tackle made by Killens. Close to a 10-yard gain on that reception. I really thought Kyle Brady would be a bigger factor in this ball game. Even though he missed a lot of games, he still came in with 26 receptions. We are at the two-minute warning. And the great Tony Dorsett is here in Nashville today watching his son, one of the premier special teamers in the NFL, Anthony Dorsett, same number, and the same face as dad, too. It's a uh, real great story, these two. Dad attends most of the home games and very involved in his son's career and his upbringing. Second down one, we're at the two-minute warning. From the 30-yard line, handoff goes to Taylor. Gets a lead block and runs for a first down inside the 25. Lead block was from Leon Searcy. Anthony Dorsett makes the tackle. The executive producers of the NFL on CBS, Sean McManus and Terry Ewart. Coordinating director of the NFL on CBS, Larry Cavallino. First down and 10 from the 24. Good block by Searcy. The pass caught by Brady who is spun into the turf at the 15, gains nine, Robinson with the tackle. Today's game produced by Bob Dikas and directed by the great Dick Klein. Great job, gentlemen, thank you. Second down and one. On the 14, Kenny Holmes is offside. Unless he was induced. Senior producer of the NFL today, Eric Mann. NFL today directed by Bob Matina, associate director for today's game, Kenny Mack. Broadcast Associates, Jeff St. Armand, The Saint, and Jen Goldschmidt. Thank you, guys. Great job. Happy holidays. Our crew is here on Christmas Eve. Had a great time last night together. We did. We had a good good year. We got a team. You know, this is a team. You, you would be like, what, the uh, left guard or something like that? You'd be or, like the water boy. Yeah, yeah. You would be like, yeah, go get me. Fetch him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more water. <laughs> I'm thirsty. 115 to play. First and goal at the nine. Fiedler in for the injured Brunel. Goes in the end zone, almost swiped by Samari Roll, who's already got two interceptions today. We've been looking at an update on this playoff picture now. Jacksonville, 13 and two. Indianapolis, 13 and two. Tennessee goes to 12 and three. Buffalo is in overtime. Miami plays tomorrow night. Seattle and Kansas City will play in about 10 minutes. Big, lots of things riding on that Kansas City-Seattle ball game. Second down goal from the nine. Jacksonville with all three of their timeouts. Good block by Wade. The center of the pass intercepted. It's Samari Roll for a third time today. There's your AFC Defensive Player of the Week, Samari Roll from Florida State. And Flag earlier effect. this year, with 57 seconds left, Samari Roll intercepted to uh, end the ball game and secure a victory for Tennessee down in Jacksonville. Penalty against Jacksonville. Samari Roll beat out incumbent Darrell Lewis. And here he is, a guy who wears number 21 because his idol is Deion Sanders. Well, he's played as well as Deion Sanders, one of the top players in the NFL. Samari Rowe was just in the right place at the right time. He obviously had done his homework and plugged it in with his skill, but it doesn't happen just by accident. You've got to be ready to play, and he has been. Big win for Tennessee. Their third consecutive win. They've won six of seven, and Jacksonville will fall to 13 and two, and they have lost 
twice to Tennessee. Eddie George, 102 yards. And Tom Coughlin, with his team struggling last week to beat Cleveland and looking horrible today, has got to go back to the drawing board with the week left in the regular season. Well, you got to inhale real quickly, get in front of your team. Now, they're gonna, he's going to stand in front of that team in about a minute and a half, and they've got to see a guy that's ready to go back to battle. They can't see anybody that looks like he has been demoralized. Get their team ready to go, and for Jeff Fisher, he's got to remember this is one victory they celebrate tonight and then back to work again tomorrow. Tennessee with a season high, 478 yards, no turnovers for the fifth time this year. They did not allow a sack. And McNair, Steve McNair, an incredible five touchdown pass performance. And with the win, the Titans have clinched at least a home field playoff game. For Sam Weiss, Kevin Owens, along for Nashville, let's go to Jim Nance in New York.